Welcome to another edition of Football Fridays in Georgia here on Georgia Public Broadcasting. Hi again, everybody. I am Mark Harmon. Tonight, we're in College Park, Georgia, where the undefeated Woodward Academy War Eagles will take on their arch rivals, the Fighting Patriots of Sandy Creek. And I'm Jackie Brent. Coming up in the show, I go one-on-one -on -one with the five-time heavyweight champion of the world himself, Evander Holyfield, and his son, Elijah. Elijah is a running back here at Woodward, and he's committed to the University of Georgia. He's also the fifth best running back in the country. I'm Sam Crenshaw. Coming up in the extra point tonight, the keys to victory for the War Eagles and Patriots in a big region showdown. Matt. And I'm Matt Stewart. Coming up in our College Football Hall of Fame recruiting roundup, Elijah Holyfield, the number one ranked running back in the state, a knockout commitment for the Georgia Bulldogs. See what I did there, Sam? Yeah. Like you get to see him tonight on GPB. So it's the War Eagles and the Fighting Patriots. The cheerleaders are ready. Eddie the Eagle is ready. The all-access pass is coming your way next. Live on GPB. You're looking live at Graham Hickson Field, Colquitt Stadium in College Park, Georgia, on the campus of Woodward Academy. Tonight, the undefeated 7-0 War Eagles will take on the 6-1 Fighting Patriots of Sandy Creek. This is a huge region rivalry, and first place will be on the line. Both teams have long and impressive pedigrees, with Sandy Creek winning three state titles since 2009, and the War Eagles with state championship trophies from 1970 and 1980. Hi again, everybody. I'm Mark Harmon, and welcome to Football Fridays in Georgia's All Access Pass pregame show. We're ready for this big game, a lot riding on it, and especially it's of interest because one player is returning for the War Eagles. That's right, that very important player is Elijah Holyfield, the son of Evander Holyfield, and I had a chance to get to know him not as the football player, but as a son, as a brother, as someone who was just trying to, at the end of the day, finish high school, take his high school football team to the next level, compete at the next college level at University of Georgia. He's been out for five weeks because of a foot injury. So certainly a good return to the football field tonight for the War Eagles and an exciting thing for Georgia fans to see as well. But before we get into all of that about the X's and O's with the game, we want to talk to you about our social media that we've got going on. You can follow us at GPP Sports on all social media platforms. That includes Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat is the newest one. Also, download our free GPB Sports app. You can keep up with scores from around the state and also stream this game live from your smartphone. We've already got some tweets coming in. This one comes from the Sandy Creek Touchdown Club. Look at this. In Tyrone, Georgia, the Tyrone De Police Department sends off the Sandy Creek High School team in fashion with a little sign here that says, Go Pats. And then this comes from Elijah Holyfield. He says, Happy birthday to his brother. So today is his brother's birthday. Also of note, Monday was Evander Holyfield's birthday. So a big birthday for the Holyfield brothers this week. And then this one comes from the Sandy Creek High School says this game at Woodward is huge. Get there, get early, get a seat. But we want you to get involved with us on social media. So be sure to connect with us. Send us your photos. Show us your school pride. If you couldn't make it to the game tonight, show us where you're watching the game from tonight. I don't care if it's on your couch, if it's in the grocery store, whatever. Show us your pregame meals. Whatever you do, whatever superstitions you have, we want to hear about them. We want to put them on the air right here. Also, find us on Snapchat to see all of the behind-the-scenes action right here at the football game. Mark? Tonight's game is a terrific matchup between Sandy Creek and Woodward Academy. Both are heralded programs. Both have top, top flight coaches. Both have a lot of talent on both sidelines. So now it's time for a little chalk talk, a little time to talk X's and O's by our play-by-play -play team of Sam Crenshaw and Matt Stewart, a segment we call Extra Point. All right, thank you. Let's take a look at tonight's Extra Point. Sam, let's start with the Sandy Creek Fighting Patriots on offense, they need to get their blockers to the second and third level. That's what we mean. You want to get those blockers if you're the Patriots offensive line into the secondary. Those linebackers into the secondary. Try to extend those plays for big games. And that's critical for a Patriots running game that's averaging 202 yards per game on the ground. Defensively, they want to limit Woodward's big plays and, of course, Elijah Holyfield. You do want to get Elijah Holyfield and try to slow him down. He is the catalyst for this team. They expect to have him back tonight. And if he is and plays the way he usually 
does, it's going to be a big, really big for the Whitwood Academy team. Patriots have the number one scoring defense in the state. They're giving up just six points per game. For Woodward, they want to take advantage of the weapons they've developed while Holyfield was out. While he's been away, they have developed help, uh, weapons. Quite a few wide receivers. Very strong receiving core. Expect to see them mixed in along with Holyfield tonight. And their junior quarterback, Ryan Glover, averaging 165 yards passing per game. And defensively, Woodward wants to make the Patriots drive the field. Trying to make them grind, try to make them grind and slow them down, make them be slow and methodical, take them out of the things that they really like to do. Going to be hard to do. The Patriots average 38 points per game. But this is an aggressive Woodward defense that has 25 sacks on the season. Now, the most important extra point tonight is happy birthday to Sam Crenshaw. Folks, Sam turned 21 today. Oh, I like that. that that's very nice. I'll, I'll, I'll take that anytime. <laughs> so happy birthday so to much. you, Sam. Great. And I know everybody here at GPB says happy birthday. Guys, that's the extra point. We do. We all say happy birthday to Sam Crenshaw and Elijah Holyfield's brother. Speaking of Elijah Holyfield, you'll hear his name a lot tonight, at least in the pregame show. But I had a chance to sit down with him earlier this week and get to know him as a student and as a son and uh, how it was, what it was like, I mean, to grow up with the last name Holyfield. Check it out. Holyfield looking to air it out. Holyfield going low. He's taking a shot. He's going. Evander Holyfield is the only five-time heavyweight champion of the world, and his son Elijah is writing his own success story. A senior at Woodward, he's the fifth best running back in the country, and he's committed to the University of Georgia. You know, I grew up a Georgia fan, grew up watching Georgia all my life, and you know, you think I never thought about you know actually playing for him, and then once the opportunity came, it kind of was like always like I don't know how I'm going to say no. And being the son of a high-profile athlete, Elijah was never far away from sports. Even before he was old enough to, to be able to actually run, his dad had him out there on the track field. The point of the matter is just want him to realize that you you had to be the very best you could be. You don't need to you don't need to be doing everything somebody else do. You got to understand what worked for you. But growing up with the last name Holyfield in no way gave Elijah the green light to cut corners. Did people ever treat you differently on the football field or in school because you had a successful father? You know, you could hear parents and stand and stuff like that. But as I got older, the players, you know, they kind of feel a certain way about me too. You know, some people treat you better. Some people treat, you know, uh, act like you got something over them or something like that and act like you did something wrong for, you know, for who my dad is. But, you know, I try my best just to, you know, stay even keel. But the player he's become is more of a testament to the work ethic instilled in him and less about anything being handed to him. In fact, as parents, their proudest moments have nothing to do with football. You know, the football stuff is something that he loves to do, but you know, with me, it's the, it's the academic side of it. Elijah made the honor roll. Um, he's actually made it every year at Woodward, so I've been very proud of him, and that's always a highlight in my life. The greatest thing for me is our relationship going to church. I, I want him to know that because this is how I made it, regardless to whatever everybody think. For Evander Holyfield, his biggest cheerleader was always his mother. And for Elijah, he's never been without an extremely deep support system. Oh, I'm, I'm proud of Elijah. He's always worked hard. Um, no matter what he does, he, he applies himself 100%, you know, on and off the field. My proudest moment is when people come up and tell me, and say, oh, he outworked everybody. You know I'm saying that, so that's kind of like, this is what life is about. When you see, you know, your dad at the games or in your mom, I mean, how does that make you feel? I know no matter what, I'm gonna have a great support system. You know, it's my mom, my grandma, my auntie. So it's something I really, I never had to worry about as, you know, as growing up is somebody not being there to watch me because they've always been there. I also asked him if, you know, when he's ready to take that big hit, is he nervous, is he ready? And he kind of rolled his eyes like, no. He said that gets him in the zone faster. He's ready to take that big hit, but who knew it would come as, as soon as, as tonight? You know, I covered his dad, Evander, for the bite fight against Mike Tyson oh, in goodness. Las Vegas back in <laughs> 1996. And, you know, Evander wasn't the biggest heavyweight. He wasn't the strongest heavyweight. He wasn't the quickest heavyweight, but he had the biggest heart, right. and he has passed that on to his son. That always wins. I also have a question for you. <laughs> Earlier today, you said that we were at Colquitt Stadium, and I'm just curious about that because last week we were at Colquitt County. There's a little battle of the Colquitt, Colquitt going on here, and I just I want to know which one to call it. Right. The important thing is I was correct <laughs> oh, both times. Goodness. It is well, Colquitt here, it is Colquitt and Moultrie. <laughs> but John Nelson has done all the research, and he's going to fill us in right now with the backstory. John. Okay, so we're talking about the county seat of Miller County, right? 
Right. Yeah. Okay. Whatever, whichever caulk the, what you want to go with. Yeah. They, <laughs> the and okay, the county seat of Miller County in single A football, the Miller County Pirates. That's Colquitt. We're at Colquitt here. This was named after James Colquitt, and this is a very short version. It's a tremendous history. Chairman of the board here at GMA, Georgia Military Academy, from 57 to 82. He also went to school here, was a rifle champion here, had five tours in Europe in World War II, was an advisor to Harry Truman. So that's why it's Colquitt here. Colquitt was named after Congressman W.T. Colquitt, and Colquitt County was created from Thomas County and Lowndes County back in 1856. That's your history lesson for right now. Let's wander over and talk to Chip. Chip. All right, time for the Inquisition. These games are always tough. This is obviously going to decide pretty much region one and two. It's going to be a tough road for whoever comes out on the short end tonight. Well, you know, obviously you always want to be the region champion, and uh, for, for order us for, to be the region champion, we've got to take care of business tonight, and then uh, that's the next step in the process. Is this a new rival? You know, you guys have played 11 times. Series is pretty much split, but where is this rivalry in a series type? Yeah, I guess it could kind of be considered new because it's traditionally one of the oldest, you know, in, in our school's history. Uh, but not having played them in such a long time uh, until this two-year cycle, you know, it is kind of new to our kids. And uh, so, you know, it's uh, kind of rekindling an old one, but uh, new to these young men. All right, go get them out on the field. We'll catch up with you in a bit. Thank you. All right, Chip Walker, he's getting ready for a very tough game. Let's send it over to the set. And Jackie. Thank you, John. Open enrollment is right around the corner, and many of us are considering health care options. For those who are eligible, a Medicare Advantage plan can really help. So joining me now to discuss a Medicare Advantage plan to suit your needs is Andrew Reeves, the Chief Operations Officer for Cigna Healthcare Spring. And Andrew, what's the first step as people start to consider their options? It's, it's certainly overwhelming, I would imagine. It definitely is. I mean, the first step is to know that it's open enrollment right now, and make sure that you understand the benefits you're getting from the plan you're in today. Because if you don't don't understand those it's really hard to compare to all the wonderful things that are out there or to even know that the plan you're in is perfect for you I would imagine that some people like to think maybe it's best to stick with my current plan but maybe it might be better to shop around well the key is if you're in something good and it's working well for you be loyal but make sure you look at your benefits and make sure you're getting the most out of it make sure your doctors are in the network make sure that the drug that you're on this year is in and and how it's covered because it covers or changes quite a bit each year and a really important question here how can people prepare for out-of-pocket expenses well again make sure that where you're going is in the network of the plan that you're in make sure the drugs that you're taking are covered in the most and you'll get the most benefits and you'll pay the less the least out of your pocket all right Andrew thank you for joining us Always Thank a you. Thanks for having us. Thanks. Mark, back to you. All right. We're just getting warmed up on All Access Pass tonight, and Matt Stewart is going to drop by to talk a little bit recruiting. That's right. You know, college players go on to play at the next level. The SEC schools certainly will see a lot of that, a lot of that here as well. Mm -hmm. Football Fridays in Georgia on GPB is made possible in part by... Regions Bank, it's time to expect more. Georgia's Electric Membership Corporation, lighting the way. Technical College System of Georgia, learn more, earn more. Cigna, together all the way. And viewers like you, thank you. You exercise, you choose the salad, occasionally. But staying well, physically, financially, emotionally, it's hard on your own. So Cigna's got your back and your knees 24 seven. Cigna's there to answer your questions. Or when you need some coaching. In sickness and in health, Cigna's there, helping you to get well and stay well. That's having a partner who's with you all the way. Cigna. Traveler and outdoors are back to back. A little something Parker for everybody. Fantastic natural history, and it starts and ends on a Georgia beach. Oh, yeah. Catch all the fun, action, and beauty now on Thursday nights. Georgia Traveler at 8. And Georgia Outdoors at 8.30. Thursdays on GPB. During this performance, one student will drop out of high school. Be there for your big finish.
Welcome back to Colquitt Stadium on the campus of Woodward Academy, where tonight the undefeated War Eagles will take on their region rival, the Fighting Patriots of Sandy Creek, and first place is on the line. And both of these schools have sent players off to the college level and beyond. Two War Eagles and four Fighting Patriots have even made it to the NFL. We now welcome in our play-by-play -play man, Matt Stewart, for our College Football Hall of Fame recruiting roundup. There's a lot of talent out yeah, there, there on the field. Let's start with Sandy Creek. They've got an offensive guard who is very good and going to play in the SEC. Well, important because they run the ball a lot, 202 yards per game rushing. We're talking about Chandler Tewitt, 6'4", 290-pound senior. He is an ESPN four-star that is the number 13-ranked offensive guard in the country. He committed to Ole Miss back on July 17th, will join former Patriots Mike Hilton and Eric Sweeney there in uh, Oxford, Mississippi. Latest in the long line of great Patriots offensive linemen, including Andrew Gardner, who played at Georgia Tech in the NFL, Alan Knott at South Carolina, and Will Adams at Auburn. Sandy Creek has another wide receiver. They've had a lot of them through the years. Corey Banks is a good one. Yeah, Corey Banks is following in the footsteps of guys like Calvin Johnson, I know that's big <laughs> shoes. Uh, Jaquay Williams, Alex Chisholm. He's not as big as all those wide receivers, but head coach Chip Walker says he's just as physical. A six foot, 170 pound senior ESPN three star wide receiver. He committed to North Carolina in July, got 29 catches on the season for 563 yards and six touchdowns. And here's a look at some of the other Patriots to keep your eye on tonight. Javon Jackson committed to Duke. Will Hart Harper, he's committed to Syracuse. Antonio Trapp has offers from Navy and Army. And Marvin Hubbard, Hubbard who's the 100-meter state champion, has an offer from Memphis and Furman. All right, for Woodward Academy, of course, Elijah Holyfield. All the spotlight is on him. Yeah. He's only played a couple of games, so it's going to be interesting to see how he performs after yeah, a five-game layoff. Yeah, I think the big question with Elijah tonight is just what kind of shape is he in for tonight's ball game? ESPN four-star. ESPN has him ranked the number 11 running back in the nation, 24 seven sports composite has him ranked the number five running back in the nation committed to the Georgia Bulldogs on September 4th but he has not played since the St. Pius game because of a stress fracture in his foot it'll be interesting to see just how much he can play tonight and the War Eagles also have a cornerback that's going to play in the ACC yeah, Anton Williams, he's a very good cornerback, uh, six foot, 170 pounds, senior ESPN three star, committed to Duke at the end of his junior season. So he's been committed to the Blue Devils for close to a year now, but, uh, you know, almost played exclusively on defense last year. He's played a lot more on offense this year, has 13 catches for 210 yards and a touchdown. And John Hunt calls Williams the War Eagles top weapon. Here's a look at some of the other guys. Jacob R Robertson, been bothered with a bad. Bad shoulder all year long. Got 17 offers, including Tennessee, Miami, and North Carolina. Max Richardson committed to Boston College. J.R. Pace, who's a junior, has offers from Duke, Vandy, and Purdue. Josh Johnson, junior wide receiver, has been offered by Georgia Southern. Ryan Glover, their junior quarterback, offered by Georgia State. And Jeffrey Hubbard, junior wide receiver, also plays cornerback, been offered by Miami of Ohio. Our Matt Stewart is in the best in the business, and that's the College Football Hall of Fame recruiting roundup. Don't forget to interact with us on social media. That means Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, even Snapchat. But now we're going to talk about some things that are that are trending out there. And we've got a question posed by our own John Nelson, who wants to know from you guys watching at home, who has surprised you the most so far this season? You can tweet us your responses at GPB Sports. And we have Gene Freeman here who says that Lowndes has been the most surprising team so far. They're better than I thought, and they are playing very good right now. And he's a Packers fan, and it even pains him to say that. I still think the Packers are the best team in the state, but Lowndes looked really good. So be sure to interact with us. Your tweets, your photos can end up right here on the air at GPB Sports. Just tweet us on all platforms right there. You can also download the app. It's free. You can keep up with scores from around the state. Also stream this game live. Mark? Time now to send it over to John Nelson and to Cygnus Bruno Gilmette for a big time presentation. John? It is that time. Ladies, if you would please, you remember your positions when we mark this up. There we go. All right. There it is. It is time once again for our friends from Cygna to present the rather long. Once again, thanks for being a great partner with us here on Football Fridays. Uh, we're really
Well, we're getting close to Halloween. There was a gremlin in that <laughs> microphone, but it's a very nice presentation. The Woodward Academy people are very pleased to get that check. The from ghosts Sigma. come early, I guess. They came a little <laughs> bit early. Coming up on the All Access Pass pregame show, John's going to come back here and talk about John's Georgia, and I'll talk to the head coach of the War Eagles. Plus, we'll see what fans are saying online and buzzing about in the social media world. Also, we'll talk to Falcons quarterback Matt Ryan. Yes, you heard that correctly about his time playing under those Friday night lights. All that and more when we continue the All Access Pass pregame show right here on GPB. Meet John. John has decided to drop out of school, but what he didn't realize is that now this door will be closed to him. And this one. This one too. Well, you get the idea. Stay connected to your team like never before with the GPB Sports Football app. Get the latest news. Watch featured games live wherever you Sammy are. Williams, find, the look at that, look at that. find relevant info on schools and take interactive 3D tours of stadiums around the state. Tweet game highlights from the stands and get up to the minute scores all Friday night. The gridiron has gone digital. Download the free GPB Sports Football app from the iTunes App Store now. Next time on I'll Have What Phil's Having, I'm going to Barcelona. It's a search for the best tapas and one of nature's greatest gifts, jamón. They don't even see that I'm eating half of it. All this and more on the next I'll Have What Phil's Having. Monday at 10 on GPB. At the heart of our community are the businesses that don't skip a beat. Georgia's electric membership cooperatives stand behind local commerce. Whether keeping farms running or shining a light on new ventures, we bring business, large and small, to our communities. Creating jobs, driving development, supporting dreams. Georgia's EMCs, powering our businesses, lighting the way. Good morning. It's 8 o'clock. Wherever you are in Georgia, we're glad you're listening. We're hearing from people all over the state right now supporting their public radio station. Thank you for 88.5. What a great new station. At last, thoughtful and intelligent information and discussions during the day. Our reporting is more reflective of the community around us. GPB is here for you every time you need us. We want to be a part of the community that is Georgia. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your support. And that's the national anthem here at Colquitt Stadium. Welcome back to the All Access Pass pregame show on Football Fridays in Georgia. And look who's here. John Nelson, the author of five books, two on high school football in the great state of Georgia. A segment we call John's Georgia brought to you by... Georgia EMC. And topic number one this week is about where we were last week. And I believe that one was Colquitt, correct? Colquitt. All right, let's recap one of the biggest games in Region 16A last week, and we were lucky to have it on the air on Football Fridays. Take you back to McTharp Stadium. The winning streak is now 23 for the Packers. Chase Parrish, 11 of 17 for 229 and three scores, all of them in the first half. And it was just from the beginning, a dominating performance. One of the best athletes in the state, Kiel Pollard, picks him up and puts him down. And then I think this was the score really toward the end of the half that kind of personified the entire evening. 49-14, your final. Cockwood is rolling. That's it for topic one. What's topic two? Topic number two is another huge rivalry. Northside Warner Robins and Warner Robins. Last story, we spent time in Slash Pine Grady and Mitchell EMCs. This one, we're going to spend time in Middle Georgia EMC and let you know what happened in front of a packed house at the MAC, and it was all Northside Warner Robins. Northside led 31-7 at the break. Tobias Oliver rushed for 148. Deshaun Dinkins for 141 on 18 carries. The largest scoring output ever for Northside in the history of the rivalry, 58-14. Your final, that's it for oh. topic two. What's topic number three? Topic number three is Clinch County is on a roll. And we're going to spend some time in Slash Pine EMC for this one. Region two single A is what we call the region of doom when it comes to single A. Probably five teams are going to make the 16 that make the postseason. We caught up with Clinch County head coach Jim Dickerson to talk about just how tough this region is. 
last year Irwin played for it and the year before Charlton. And, uh, you know, in between, there's a lot of awfully good football teams. Uh, uh, certainly those two are the top of the class right now to start this year. Uh, but anyway, good football all the way through. You know, everybody likes to use the, the phrase kind of like the SEC, there's not a Friday night off. And he's not going to have a Friday night off as he takes on Lanier County tonight. That's it for this week. Just like football Fridays in Georgia, we don't take a night off. Brought to you by? George EMC. See, he did it this time. Yeah. The Atlanta Falcons are off to a great start, so it's time now to take a look into the Falcons locker room where quarterback Matt Ryan strolls down memory lane from his high school football playing days in our Falcons flashback. There's nothing better, right, when you're in high school uh, playing with, you know, some of your best friends and, and uh, you know, you're going against your, your local rivals, those kind of things. I mean, it's just football at its purest, and uh, it's a lot of fun, you know, thinking back about that. And uh, some of my best football memories are from high school. Talk about that one specific memory, maybe a play, maybe a win. Uh, what would that be? I remember uh, we played one of our rival high schools, Malvern Prep, my senior year, and it was raining, and it was kind of a miserable day, that kind of deal. And we hadn't beaten them in a couple of years. and. Um, you know, we, we were able to pull it together. I think we won something like 14-12 or 14-10, something like that. But that was kind of the one that sticks out. I mean, just kind of gutting it out in the rain and, and finding a way to get it done. As a professional player, as a member of the Atlanta Falcons, what advice would you give to a Georgia high school football player? Have fun. You know, uh, it's a great time in life. Uh, high school, enjoy it. Uh, have a blast doing it and work really hard. Uh, and hopefully, you know, if you aspire to keep playing, it'll work out for them. War Eagles coach John Hunt coached and played in the NFL, coached and played in the college ranks, and he was last year voted the 4A Coach of the Year. Moments ago, I talked to the head War Eagle about tonight's game and his team this season. Well, I tell you what, we got a resilient team. Believe it or not, we've kind of been uh, snake bit with some injuries this year, and um, and we've had quite a few people miss games. And uh, thankfully, we had the next person stood up and jumped in there and played well, and played well enough for us to to win and be here at seven and zero. So, it it uh, hasn't been quite as easy road to get where we are right now, you know, with our little injuries. But I think we're starting to get everybody healthy right now, which is a good part of the season too. Talk about tonight's game, obviously. First place in the region on the line tonight with Sandy Creek. Well, absolutely. Uh, I mean, obviously, it's a region ball game at Sandy Creek. You know, that coupled together makes this the the, uh, the importance of this game really big. Uh, we're certainly fortunate we have them at home, and we're hopefully uh, have a good crowd out here and be able to play well and come out with a win. You're getting Elijah Holyfield back at running back. What do you expect him after being off for five games? Uh, he's been off for about five and a half weeks, and uh, we got him back, and he ran around a little bit this week. Uh, you know, grossly out of shape, obviously. You know, I, I guess to do my best to manage him. Certainly, I think we're going to use him, but uh, I certainly need to make sure he's all there in the fourth quarter when I expect us to be in a tight game to hopefully pull it out. Good luck tonight, Coach. Thank you. I appreciate it. Don't forget that you can hang out with us online, too. So that's on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat. And if you download our app, it's GPP Sports. It's for free. Go to the App Store. Look at this. You can stream the game live from your phone, from your iPhone, from your iPad. And Android root users, we haven't forgotten about you. That's coming. But you can still download the GPP Sports app on your phone as a button, as a home screen. But for now, this works pretty good. You can stream the game live from right here at Woodward Academy. So that's pretty cool. You got Mark Harmon right there. That's pretty neat. I just interviewed that guy. <laughs> I know. It's like that just happened. That's pretty I know, cool. That's pretty neat. I might just watch this. Yeah. You got the rest of it. You can watch me live and in person. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I believe that it is that time. We are counting down to kickoff. It is the Fighting Patriots of Sandy Creek. And it's also the War Eagles of Woodward Academy. It is game time on Football Fridays in Georgia. Live, live on, on GPB. GPB. Line October 23rd, 1959, Downey, California, a town that would later claim shards of fame as the birthplace of the Apollo space program and the hometown of Richard and Karen Carpenter. That sees the arrival of one Alfred Matthew Yankovic, a curly-haired lad whose Yugoslavian ancestry virtually demanded that he learn how to play the accordion. So he did. He also watched a lot of Monty Python, read a lot of Mad Magazine, and listened to the Dr. Demento.
The Sandy Creek Fighting Patriots hail from Tyrone, Georgia, and are frequently seen at the Georgia Dome at the end of the season. Coach Chip Walker is back for an 11th season, but the Patriots have been playing for a Coach Walker since 1999. Chip's dad, the legendary Rodney Walker, helmed the team for six years before Chip took over. They've been to the playoffs every year since 2002 and have come up as champs three times in that stretch. The Woodward Academy War Eagles hail from the largest independent school in the continental United States and one of the oldest. It was founded in 1900 as Georgia Military Academy, and that combative spirit still lives on on the field. It's the fifth season for Coach John Hunt. He's gotten his team to the 4A playoffs, every one of them. But no trophies yet. Would this be their year? As Weird Al blows out his birthday candles, we're getting close to the end of the regular season. Who gets to count tonight as a win? We're ready for another Football Friday in Georgia. Time to play some football. That's a championship team right there. It's a hot time tonight. Welcome to Colquitt Stadium in College Park. It's another football Friday in Georgia on GPB, where tonight the seventh ranked Sandy Creek Fighting Patriots take on the second ranked and undefeated Woodward Academy War Eagles in a critical Region 5 Quad A battle. Critical because as you take a look at the region standings, you will see that Carrollton is in first place at 3 0. They beat Troop last night, so Woodward and Sandy Creek currently tied for second place at 2-0. And good evening, I'm Matt Stewart, joined by Sam Crenshaw. And Sam, this ball game is big tonight for so many different reasons. Let's start with, first and foremost, the region standings. You can't win the region championship tonight, but you can certainly play yourself out of a chance at winning the region championship if you lose tonight. That is so true, Matt. Remember how important this game was, a pivotal game a year ago. Woodward Academy goes down to Sandy Creek, and they win the game there. They stop Sandy Creek's string of six consecutive region championships and end their string of 44 consecutive region wins. For that reason alone, this was really big tonight. The other big story tonight, another big reason why this game is important, is that the state's number one ranked running back, Elijah Holyfield committed to the Georgia Bulldogs, returns to the Woodward Academy lineup tonight after missing the last five games with a stress fracture in his foot. And that's big news for the War Eagles on offense. Of course, having him back is going to be big tonight. But in his absence, they managed to develop a lot of other offensive weapons. So maybe a little more balanced attack than usual, but still look for a lot from number 13 tonight. Holyfield and the War Eagles offense going up against a Sandy Creek defense that is number one in the state in scoring defense, allowing just six points per game. And led by speedy linebackers, physical linebackers, Will Harper and Antonio Trapp. Physical is the word for them. That's what they like to do. They're a punishing defensive unit, but they will be put to the test tonight by an offensive unit that is bringing back Elijah Holyfield. Like Woodward Academy, Sandy Creek has so many weapons on offense, but no longer the star running back, Eric Sweeney, who's now at Ole Miss. Instead, they've replaced him with three junior running backs led by Jalen Green. That was the big question for the Sandy Creek team when the season began. How in the world would they make up for the departure of Eric Sweeney, who's now at Ole Miss? Well, Jalen Green, you look at right there now, is one of three junior running backs who combined from the very first game of the season when they blanked Creekview, and they're doing a great job this season. And backing him up is Marvin Hubbard, who's the state 100-meter sprint champion. Now, they'll be going up against a Woodward defense that's very aggressive, 25 quarterback sacks on the season, and they're led by their middle linebacker, Max Richardson, who's committed to Syracuse and uh, actually committed to Boston College. Yep, and that's a guy that Coach Hunt just loves. He's a heart and soul guy at the defensive unit. He's the anchor of the defensive unit is what he will tell you. 25 tackles he's had on the season. Look for him to have a big, big game tonight. Rolled his ankle a couple of weeks ago, but head coach John Hunt says that Max Richardson is 100% tonight. Now the third member of our team is John Nelson. He's down on the sideline to tell you yet another reason why this game is so important this evening. Good evening, Matt. Good evening, Sam. And good evening to all of you accessing us, however you are doing so, whether it's on GPB TV, GPB.org, or the GPB Sports app. 
You've seen the region standings with Carrollton's win last night. The difference between being the number one seed and being the number two seed in this region means one of two things. If you're the one, you probably end up with two home games and playing some combination of Marist and Mary Persons before seeing Buford in the semifinals. If you're a two seed, that means that you probably are going to play St. Pius. You've got to travel to Bainbridge, and you've got Cartersville in the semifinals. We will have election coverage is what we call it this time of year. We'll let you know what, what's going on all around the state. We'll keep you up to date with all the scores, all the regions, and all of the impacts that all of these games have tonight. So, guys, let's send it upstairs for a new October candle in a new venue here at Woodward. All right, thank you, Nelly. Woodward Academy 7-0 on the season. They are 2-0 in Region 5. Quad A coming off a 37-8 victory at Fayette County last Friday night. Only two games this season have been decided by 27 points or less, and that's their 36-29 double overtime win against uh, St. Pius and their 20-10 win against Eagles Landing Christian. Their other five wins at Decatur, Lovett, Clarkston, at Troop, and at Fayette County have been decided by close to 35 points per game. Sandy Creek at 6-1. They also 2-0 in Region 5, Quad A, coming off a 49-7 win at Troop last Friday night or against Troop last Friday night. They've won five straight games since their 17-15 loss versus Jonesboro in Week 2. Six blowout wins other than that by an average of 38 points per game, and none of them have been less than 34 points, and that was a 34-0 win against Noonan. Chip Walker in his 11th season as the Sandy Creek head coach. 116-20-1 his overall record. Three state titles coming in 2009, 2010, and 2012. Last seven plus seasons after going 21 and 13 in his first three seasons, Walker and the Patriots have gone 95, seven and one. And John Hunt in his fifth season as Woodward's head coach, 42 and 14 his record, 26 and seven the last two plus seasons after going 15 and eight in his first two seasons. He was the Quad A coach of the year a year ago, and his background includes many years with Steve Spurrier as an offensive line coach with the Florida Gators, Washington Redskins, and the South Carolina Gamecocks. He was also a head coach in the state of Florida, Buholtz in Gainesville, Dr. Phillips in New Smyrna Beach. Yep, he has been around, of course, uh, great history with him. Of course, you talk with him a lot about coaching with Steve Spurrier. It, it really, it's a now, now he is a head coach. He gets to have a little more balance, try to have a little more balance because with, with Coach Spurrier, they were flinging the ball around so much. 12th all-time meeting dating back to 1996 with Woodward leading the all-time series 6-5. War Eagles 28-7 win at Sandy Creek last season, snapped a four-game losing streak in the series, but was also the first meeting in the series since 2005. And not only did it snap a four-game losing streak in the series, Sam, it snapped a six-year region championship streak for Sandy Creek and also snapped the Fighting Patriots' 44-game region winning streak dating back to the 2007 season, so it was big. It was big, it was big. The Patriots, if we could give them a term or, or a title, will be the Sultans of the south side of Atlanta. That's what they have been. They've been just a dominant force when you come south of this city. Well, we're ready to get started here at Colquitt Stadium in the shadow of the... Hartsfield Jackson International Airport. I don't know which way the wind is blowing out. You can see which way the planes are taking off tonight. You can see, you can see them from here in the press box. And the opening kick is going to be taken in the end zone by Javon Jackson. So it'll come out to the 20-yard line for Sandy Creek. And they are led by their sophomore quarterback, 6'1", 165 pound, Bryant Walker. He is the son of the head coach and the second straight Walker and son of the head coach to quarterback this team following in the footsteps of his older brother, Trey, last season. Walker on the season has completed 61% of his passes for 973 yards. That's 139 a game. 10 touchdowns and a very impressive zero interception. That is very impressive. When you get to this stage of the season, to have not given up a pick all season long, that is remarkable for someone who stepped into this job and is starting to get his holding things down quite well. Here's Brian Walker. Well, Sandy Creek averaging 38.7 points per game. That's number five in 4A. 
And we have a timeout call by Sandy Creek before they can even snap the ball. What's that? Coach Walker really must have seen something he didn't like to start this game with a timeout. Well, somehow they didn't have the right personnel on the field. And let's check in with John Nelson. They didn't get the 11th man on the field until seven seconds to go on the play clock. Coach Walker didn't have much choice but to burn the timeout. Well, he was especially upset with the way they played a year ago in their 28-7 loss against Woodward. They had five offsides penalties and a roughing the passer penalty late in the game that led to the Woodward Academy win. So he felt like they did not play their best last year in the 28-7 loss, and they start this ball game with a five-yard penalty before they can snap the ball. And you was talk we were just talking about the quarterback, Brett, Brett, uh, Brett Walker, Brian Walker, and to have come this far in the season without an interception. And here we are at this stage in the season not having enough guys on the field for the first play of the game. That's something you don't expect to see. Well, you see that Marvin Hubbard lines up in the backfield behind Bryant Walker, so he's our starting running back tonight in a four-wide set for the Fighting Patriots. First pass to Jackson, and Javon Jackson runs out of bounds, and another flag on the field as we take a look at the Regions Bank starting lineup for the Fighting Patriots and Chandler to it. Their right tackle, four-star ESPN, number 13 offensive guard in the country, although he plays tackle for the Patriots. He's committed to Ole Miss. And in the backfield, Corey Banks in a long line of great fighting Patriots wide receiver. Banks is committed to North Carolina. He's got 29 catches on the season and six touchdowns. And there is Chandler to it, following in the footsteps of a great legacy of offensive linemen here at Sandy Creek. Andrew Gardner, who played at Georgia Tech, went on to the NFL. Alan Knott, South Carolina, he's on the sideline tonight over there for Sandy Creek. And Will Adams at Auburn. So consecutive penalties. Ball was thrown backwards to Javon Jackson, who's also their number two quarterback. And you see, he acted as if he wanted to throw the ball downfield to Corey Banks instead runs out of bounds as we take a look at the Regents Bank starting lineup for the War Eagles up front. Myrick, their bandit, has nine quarterback sacks on the season. Max Richardson, their Mike linebacker, committed to Boston College. And in the secondary, Antone Williams, the corner, is committed to Duke. So second down. Second and 13, Marvin Hubbard. Not much running room for Marvin Hubbard as he gets stopped shy of the original line of scrimmage and it's gonna bring up a third down and long. Watch him take the toss here and look at the black jerseys all around. Not much there for him, a lot of pursuit. K.J. Phillips, one of those in on the stop, number five. Yeah, and Max Richardson, their Mike linebacker, already has two tackles already in this ball game. 53 tackles on the season and six quarterback sacks, five tackles for loss for the solid six-foot, 230-pound senior. So third down from the 17-yard line. Play action. And a quarterback sack back at the five yard line. Knox, Knox Hagen, Hagen yep. with the quarterback sack, the 26th sack of the season for Woodward Academy. And Walker's looking, doesn't have a receiver open, now tries to run, but there's Hagen there to put him down. Big defensive play for the War Eagles. So Sandy Creek ends up losing 15 yards on their opening possession. And they will be punting out of their own end zone. Major Weems, the sophomore, back to punt. Going to be taken by Hubbard at the 37-yard line. Hubbard tries to come to the near side. No running room for Hubbard as he is tackled by Ian Barnes, but great field position for Woodward Academy for their first possession of the ball game. Great field position. The sack makes the difference. 
put them back. Not the greatest punt in the world. And here they are starting on the other side of the 50-yard line. Great place for this Woodward Academy offense to start. Well, there's the quarterback, number seven, Ryan Glover, the junior, who's completed 62.7% of his passes for 162 a game. Ten touchdowns, couple of interceptions. He's run for four touchdowns, and he's got an offer from Georgia State. So first and ten from the 40-yard line. Glover going to the air and got a man wide open. That's going to be a touchdown on the very first play of the game. What a blown coverage. A 40-yard touchdown pass to Jacob Robertson, and Woodward has a 6-0 lead. One minute and 11 seconds, or two minutes and 11 seconds into this game. What a call. What a remarkable call. Of course, everybody's watching number 13 to see if they give the ball to Elijah Holyfield, so everybody's kind of helping, trying to help out with him. And they don't pay attention to the receiver that comes free it's all alone great catch nobody there at all in for the touchdown Martin Rodriguez on for the PAT and Rodriguez puts it through he is now 34 of 35 on his PATs this season and Woodward Academy jumps on top a 40 yard touchdown pass from Ryan Glover to Jacob Robertson, and the War Eagles have the early touchdown advantage. Football Fridays in Georgia on GPB is made possible in part by Regions Bank, it's time to expect more. Georgia's Electric Membership Corporation, lighting the way. Technical College System of Georgia, learn more, earn more. Cigna, together all the way. And viewers like you, thank you. The new College Football Hall of Fame and Chick-fil-A fan experience puts fans closer to the game experience. Featuring over 30,000 square feet of college football interactive exhibits. Tickets available at cfbhall.com. Jacob Robertson with the 40-yard touchdown reception to give Woodward a 7-0 lead on Sandy Creek. Have an iPhone or iPad stay connected to your team and every high school football team with the GPB Sports Football app. Now you can watch tonight's games live wherever you are. Get the latest news, find stats and matchups, and take interactive 3D tours of stadiums around the state. Tweet game highlights and get up to the minute scores all Friday night. The gridiron is now digital. Download the free GPB Sports Football app from the iTunes App Store now. John Nelson will be using that GPB football app to update scores for us throughout the night. You see the one play drive, not really a drive, just a scoring play. And Jacob Robertson, who's been sidelined most of the season because first a broken collarbone and then some shoulder issues, gets on the board with the 40-yard catch. Javon Jackson will return from the one-yard line. And Javon Jackson gets hit by Whitmer just shy of the 20-yard line. So Stephen Whitmer on the tackle. Javon Jackson gets the ball back to the 20 and a half. And Sandy Creek that lost 15 yards on their opening possession now goes on offense for a second time. Down seven, nothing. And we'll see what they do offensively this time. Last play, of course, that big sack by Knox Hagen. And plus the penalties really hurt him badly. Uh, Sam on that first possession before they could even run a play before they ran their second play they'd already been whistled for two penalties on offense so first and ten ball at the 20 and a half yard line for the fighting Patriots toss goes to Marvin Hubbard he's trying to get around the edge and he will not be able to do that the bandit Terry Myrick was there to make sure he couldn't turn the corner and that's going to be second down and long coming up Actually lost maybe a yard on the play. Myrick there, right there with him, stride for stride, making sure he didn't get to turn that corner, forcing him out of bounds. 
defensive play. Brings up a second down and 12. Hubbard, the 5'10", 180-pound junior who's rushed for 421 yards and a 9.6 yards per carry average lined up as the tailback again. He'll get the handoff again, and he gets hit immediately at the line of scrimmage. No running room. K.J. Phillips, the sophomore linebacker, stopped him in his tracks, and it's going to be third down. Watch 32, Myrick get the first shot on him to slow him up right there at the line. Gets the shot right there. And then Phillips comes in and the crew finishes things off. K.J. Phillips, the 5'9", 200-pound sophomore linebacker, came into the ball game leading the team with 84 tackles on the season. Third down and 10. Sandy Creek's offense unable to get on track thus far. Bryant throws, and that is complete to Banks. Corey Banks, their top wide receiver, moves the sticks with a 20-yard reception to the 40-yard line. And you talk about Brian Walker coming in and inheriting this the starting quarterback job. When you have a receiver like this one, it helps out a whole lot. Corey Banks showing you why he's on his way, uh, has committed to North Carolina, his 30th reception of the season. So first and 10, ball at the 40-yard line. You see Banks, 29 catches for 563, 19.4 yards per catch coming into the ball game. And Hubbard, again, very little running room. Actually, that was Jalen Green that time. Jalen Green has replaced Hubbard in the backfield, and that's the first carry for Jalen Green. This front for the War Eagles has been very active and playing very, very well and slowing down that run. They're off, they're off to a great start in this game. Patriots average 202.9 yards per game running the ball. Jalen Green comes to the near side and he gets leveled by the safety J.R. Pace. J.R. Pace is a guy who also had been an outstanding offensive player, but he's doing more on the defensive side of the ball this season. There he is, the big stop. Well, Pace had been a starting wide receiver for the War Eagles until suffering a broken hand. And so since he's got a broken hand, you can't play wide receiver, but does not inhibit his defensive skills. That was his 30th tackle of the season. Hand doesn't slow him down at all. So third down and seven with the ball at the 44-yard line. Bryant throws, and that is complete. Catch made by Javen Hawes for the first down. Pressure was coming. Walker stands in there and delivers the, catch, the pass. And a great catch there by Hawes. First down. So Hawes with his fifth catch of the season, a junior wide receiver, moves the sticks of first and 10 for Sandy Creek at the 47-yard line. Five minutes in, Woodward already on top, 7-0. Jalen Green and helmet off as Jalen Green got stuck hard. Got a 29 on the field who just made the tackle, and we don't have that number on our roster, our depth chart. So John Nelson, find out who 29 is for us. I'm guessing that's, I'm thinking it's Kobe Sandell. Yeah, I'm seeing 24 on his helmet. Yeah, I think that's Kobe Sandell, who yep. typically wears 24. He's wearing 29 tonight. I noticed the 24 on the back of his helmet. So second down, Marvin Hubbard going to be dropped for a loss. Hagen, actually that's Costin Barber that time. Costin Barber with the big tackle. Going to bring up third down and long. Once again, the defensive line for Rupert Academy, very active. Big guys are getting off the blocks and making some big stops. Here he is. 
Watch Barber, 62, and he's just coming right at him. Big stop. Barber, the 6'1", 210-pound senior with 29 tackles and three sacks on the season coming into tonight's ball game. Sandy Creeksham has already committed twice on long third down conversion opportunities on this drive. Phillips sneaks up on a blitz and then backed out of it. Here comes a rush from Richardson. We'll drop it off to Hubbard. And Hubbard gets dropped by Hagen at the 41 yard line, about four yards short of the first down. Well, Richardson was coming really to bring some heat on him. The pressure, big fella coming right up there and he, oh, just misses him. He's able to get the pass away, but great defensive pursuit. And there's 52. Knox Hagen there to finish things off for Woodward. So fourth down, and really it's about five instead of four. And let's see if Sandy Creek goes for it right here. Because if he fail, you're going to give a short field to Woodward Academy. And it looks like they will punt. So Major Weems on to punt for a second time for Sandy Creek. He is the younger brother of Delvin Weems the former star running back for Sandy Creek, who's now at Marshall. Nobody back for Woodward Academy, and the ball's going to kick into the end zone, and that will be a touchback on a 42-yard kick by Major Weems. That punt looked like it might check up and stop right there inside the two, but it carried on over into the end zone. Yeah, that's the right play right there. You can't go for it and give Woodward Academy, another short field. They already scored in one play from the 40-yard line. If it fell, you're going to give them about a 60-yard field to work with. So that was the right call to pump the ball away, and so Woodward now has to go the distance as they'll start from their own 20-yard line. So Woodward's run only one offensive play. That was the 40-yard touchdown pass from Glover to Robertson, and that's the first carry of the night, and the first carry in over a month and a half for Elijah Holyfield. And Holyfield picks up just a couple of yards, has not played since the second game of the season because of a stress fracture in his foot. And what a game he had. That was a game against St. Pius. I believe they, they won that game in overtime. He had 183 yards and four touchdowns on 18 carries in that game. Big, big, big uh, weapon for the War Eagles as they pull that one out. And Coach Hunt will tell you he's not crazy about that game, wasn't proud of the way the team played in general, but still they got the victory. We saw Holyfield's numbers in just two games, 313 yards rushing, and that still leads the team. Glover back to pass again and looking across the middle, and it was broken up. Don't know that that was intentional, but Antonio Trapp had the ball hit off his shoulder. Didn't even really see it coming as we take a look at the Regents Bank starting lineup for Woodward on the offensive line. Farrell and Berkey, the guard and the tackle, those guys are the anchors at that offensive line. And, of course, Elijah Holyfield leads the skill position players, the four-star running back and commitment to the University of Georgia. So third down and eight now from the 22-yard line. That's Robertson, number 18, split out here to the bottom. He had the 40-yard touchdown catch earlier in the quarter. Watch for him. Glover going to run it instead with a spin move. We'll pick up the first down. And Ryan Glover's got lots of room to run and finally steps out of bounds at the Sandy Creek 41. That's a 37-yard run by Glover. Watch from Ryan Glover here. Takes a step back, and this is clearly a playing play, steps up and runs the spin, and there's nothing in front of him but green grass. And perhaps the silver lining in the dark cloud of losing Elijah Holyfield for five games was they found out Ryan Glover was a player. Yep, he is that. They've had to rely on him a lot more. They've had to rely on the passing game a lot more than they would have had they had Holyfield the entire season. Now Holyfield gets his second carry. And Holyfield, not much doing for Holyfield right there. That's Colby Warrior making the tackle for Sandy Creek as we take a look at the Regions Bank starting lineup for the Patriots on defense. Forte, their defensive tackle is six sacks. He has an offer from Ball State. The linebackers, Harper and Trapp, are both projected safeties at the next level. Harper committed to Syracuse, and Trapp's got offers from Navy and Army. And in the secondary, Javon Jackson, committed to Duke. 
just a couple of weeks ago. He's an ESPN three-star safety with four interceptions. Play action and incomplete. Trying to get the ball to number one, Antone Williams. Here's a look. Try to go to Williams. I uh, just couldn't bring it in. It was right there off one hand. Williams, a guy that played almost exclusively last season on defense, but head coach John Hunt decided, hey, this guy is so talented. We got to find a way to get him involved with the offense, and that's what they've been able to do this year. And that was an expeditious move given that he didn't know Holyfield was going to be down. They had already decided to use Antone on the offensive side of the ball a lot more before Holyfield got hurt. Holyfield calls for a timeout. The ball was snapped anyway. I think they did get the timeout before the ball was snapped, so that's not a live ball. That's one thing you got to do. You, you, you want the timeout, but yep. don't take your eye off the ball because you don't get the timeout unless the referees blow the whistle, right. unless the officials blow the whistle. So keep your eye on the ball even while you're trying to call the timeout. I'm sure he's been reminded of that in this huddle. Well, let's check in now with John Nelson. All right, guys, it is that time where we tell you what is going on around the state. Time to kick it for the first time this evening and the first stop. DeKalb County, Arabia Mountain hanging in there with St. Pius right now in Region 6 Quad A. Pius right now the number one seed at 5-0, 5-2 overall, and Arabia Mountain having a really good year. 4-3 overall, 4-1 in the region right now tied at 14. You see how much time's left in the first quarter. Arabia Mountain hanging in there in Region 6 Quad A. More as we go. Well, there's Elijah Holyfield, number 13, averaging 8.7 yards per carry in his two games. Practice for the first time on Wednesday. Hunt says he was huffing and puffing, just got out of the booth last week. So third down now and seven. Setting up the screen for Holyfield and he's got lots of real estate. Holyfield makes a man miss, stumbles forward to the 15 yard line and a big first down for Elijah Holyfield and Woodward Academy. And this is the other way they love to use him when he was healthy out of the backfield. And there he is. Patriots are bringing the pressure, but there's Holyfield there. And then the, look at the balance to stay on his feet. Stay up and get that extra yard. And there's Holyfield, 5'11", 205, a great looking physical specimen. Just like his dad, ESPN four star, 11th ranked running back in the nation. He committed to the Georgia Bulldogs on September 4th. First and 10. Holyfield gets it again, starting to get rolling. You can see he's, he's taking the contact, and now he's getting some extra yards after that contact. Not a big gainer right there, but you get the sense that he's starting to get some momentum. And that's the thing you notice about him, getting that extra yard. We see him in the last two plays now, him giving that extra effort to get that extra yard. That's the thing, of course, that obviously Coach Mark Rick and the staff over at University of Georgia really like about him. But that's what he does when he's healthy and in this offense for Woodward Academy. Inside our final two minutes of this first quarter. Second down and eight with the ball at the 13 yard line. Holyfield gets it again. He a whole man, he made a move on a guy and he's gonna score the touchdown. 13 yard touchdown run for Elijah Holyfield. He's starting to get warmed up folks. He is starting to get warmed up. I think that's number three, Javon Jackson, who came up and just lost. I think a sock went one way and a shoe went the other. He, he right there, couldn't stop on him. He wanted to try to find a way to square up to try to make some type of play on him. Didn't happen. Elijah Holyfield in for the touchdown. Welcome back. Seventh touchdown run for Holyfield in this, his third game of the season. Rodriguez on for the PAT, and he's good, and Woodward has a 14 to nothing lead. One more look at the play. Holyfield takes the handoff. Jackson thinks he has the play on him and just goes right down to the turf. In for the score. Elijah Holyfield. That kid's a high school senior, man. He's, yeah. He's been in the weight room. He's been working out a little bit. There he is breathing a little bit. Remember Coach said he's a little winded this week. 
back out on the field. Yeah, that, that's going to be the real key. It's not his skill level, but his stamina level for this ball game as he capped the eight-play, 80-yard drive with his 13-yard touchdown run. Woodward with 42 rushing yards so far in this game. Sandy Creek has negative two. Man, I see that. So Woodward has jumped out to a two touchdown lead on Sandy Creek here. And this Patriots defense has already given up eight more points than their per game average. This is a little pooch kick that's gonna kick out of bounds at the 34 yard line. Kind of an idea, I guess, guarding against the opportunity for a big run back, something that would ignite Sandy Creek and get them back into this game. Because right now we talked about how they've been struggling offensively, not able to get any type of momentum or consistency, nothing on the ground. Everything they've gotten tonight has been through the air. So the uh, penalty against uh, Woodward on the ball kicking out of bounds gives Sandy Creek the ball at their 35-yard line. So first and 10 for the Patriots. Walker back to pass. That's complete to Corey Banks and Banks. Picks up the first down as he's shoved out of bounds by Antone Williams. That's a 10-yard pickup. Once again, this is how the Patriots have been able to move. This is where they've had success offensively tonight has been through the air. Corey Banks. Head coach Chip Walker saying he's starting to play like a number one wide receiver. He's not the size of... You know, those great Sandy Creek wide receivers like Calvin Johnson, Jaquay Williams, Alex Chisholm. But Chip Walker says he's just as physical as those guys. That's Drazen Parson getting his first carry of the ball game. And Parson gets stopped shy of the line of scrimmage. He's the third member of this triple threat backfield for Sandy Creek, but not much for him either tonight. At least not on that play. That'll be a tackle for loss for Kobe Sandell, his third of the season. Dre Parson is the uh, smallest of the junior running back trio, but maybe the shiftiest and the hardest to tackle, although Sandell got him on the ground pretty easy right there with a solid hit. Final 30 seconds of the first quarter, and Parson gets walloped again. And it is Costin Barber with his second tackle for loss in this quarter. Once again, the War Eagles defensive front. Guys are getting it done tonight. They've got four tackles for loss, including the Hagen quarterback sack in this first quarter as the first 12 minutes come to a close. And Woodward dominates the first quarter. Offensively and defensively started with the touchdown pass from Glover to Robertson. And then Holyfield ran it in. Woodward up two scores as we head to the second. He brings out the best in all of us. Exercise. You choose the salad occasionally, but staying well, physically, financially, emotionally, is hard on your own. So Cigna's got your back and your knees 24-7. Cigna's there to answer your questions. Or when you need some coaching. In sickness and in health, Cigna's there, helping you to get well and stay well. That's having a partner who's with you all the way. Cigna. At the heart of our community are the businesses that don't skip a beat. 
Georgia's electric membership cooperatives stand behind local commerce. Whether keeping farms running or shining a light on new ventures, we bring business, large and small, to our communities. Creating jobs, driving development, supporting dreams. Georgia's EMCs, powering our businesses, lighting the way. Nothing prepares you better for a great career than the technical college system of Georgia. TCSG colleges produce graduates with the knowledge and training today's top employers are looking for. With campuses across Georgia, state-of-the-art facilities, and outstanding instructors with real-world experience, it's the kind of affordable college education that will fast-track you into a rewarding career. We're building a better future for you. Contact the TCSG College in your area today or go to tcsg.edu. The annual Lights, Lights celebration kicks off the holiday season in historic downtown Moultrie, Thanksgiving night, November 26th at 6 p.m. Brought to you by City of Moultrie Main Street Program and Downtown Moultrie Association. DowntownMoultrie.com Welcome back to College Park, getting ready for the second 12 minutes. Woodward Academy, a dominant first quarter. Two scores up 14 to nothing over Sandy Creek. And let's kick it real quick before we start the second quarter. And we're heading down south to Region 3, 5A. Right now, halfway through the second quarter, Ware County leading Statesboro by the score of 15 to 3 there at Veterans Memorial Stadium. And here's how important this game is for Region 3, 5A. Coffee, South Effingham, Glen. And then you see Ware County right now on the outside looking in after two losses in a row. They desperately need this one to be that fifth team chasing after that fourth playoff spot. Coming out of Region 3-5A, Statesboro needs all the help they can get to finish to 500. Back upstairs for the second quarter, it's Matt and Sam. All right, thank you, Nelly. We start this second quarter with Woodward Academy on top, 14 to nothing. And a third down and 12 coming up for the Fighting Patriots from their own 43-yard line. Sam, they really need to get a first down here. Yep, third down. They have been able to, to convert on some third down so far, but this is a third and long. Let's see what they do. Sandy Creek, two of four on their third down so far tonight. Bryant Walker, four of four passing for 42 yards. Steps up in the pocket to avoid the rush. Throws downfield. It is intercepted at the 25-yard line. Darian Higgins, Wiggins, pardon me, brings it back to the 40, his fourth interception of the season, and that is the first interception that Bryant Walker has thrown this year. We mentioned that before the game, that he hadn't given up a pick all season long. He threw this one into triple coverage. Look at the three black jerseys that are there. He flings it out there anyway, but and there's Wiggins who comes away with the pick and a nifty return. Tenth interception of the season for this War Eagles defense, and they have just been all over Sandy Creek here in the first 12 minutes of this game, and now they've got the ball back again. War Eagles first and 10 from their own 40-yard line. Hand off to Holyfield, and Holyfield got hit in the backfield by D.J. Forte and was able to struggle forward to the line of scrimmage. Now that's a nice little battle right there between Forte, who's 260, and Holyfield, who's 205. And there you see Coach Walker asking his players, what are you seeing? What are you looking at in the field? He's there going over things. And that's some of the new things we see now, technology-wise, that, that the players and the coaches are able to do uh, when they go off the field. And that man not pleased with what he's seen from his team so far tonight at all. Down 14 to nothing here after 12 minutes of play. Play action. Glover got a man open and that is intercepted. Off the hands of Johnson and Jackson bringing it back the other way. Javon Jackson finally tripped up at the 30 yard line. The Duke commitment with his fifth interception of the season. Very opportunistic and he gets up there favoring uh, a leg there as he goes off the field. Hope you'll be okay, but what a play. Sometimes, sometimes the right place at the right time. That's what happens here. Off the hands of Josh Johnson and into the hands of Javon Jackson. 
his fifth pick of the year and just the third interception that Glover has thrown this year. And Sandy Creek with great field position for the first time tonight. First and 10 at the Woodward 28 yard line. Big break there for Sandy Creek. Let's see if they can change things for him. That's Jalen Green on the carry. Green gets down to the 24 yard line, gets close to five on that carry. There's Jalen Green, the 5'10", 190 junior running back. One of the trio of running backs they're using this season to replace Eric Sweeney as Marvin Hubbard checks back into the ball game at running back. A lot to make up for with Sweeney last year. 1,842 yards, 21 touchdowns. That's a, a big hole going out of your offensive production. And these three have tried to make up for that this season. Second down and six officially. Pass thrown complete to Banks. Third catch of the ball game for Banks as he gets driven out of bounds by Antone Williams, but that should be enough for a first down. Big to get that first down. They continue this drive, coming off the big interception. A little bit of a momentum swing possibly for the Sandy Creek team, especially if they're able to get into the end zone here, Matt. Well, if nothing else, they've at least slowed down the momentum of Woodward after Woodward had gotten the pick and was threatening to go up by three scores. Two minutes into the second quarter, first and 10 for Sandy Creek from the 18. Jalen Green on the carry. Green picks up a couple of yards on the play. Not much tough sledding uh, inside once again against the, the, the War Eagle front. They've been very difficult to move against and run against throughout this game. And now let's see, once we get down inside the 20 yard line, if that front stiffens even more. Second down and eight, ball at the 16 yard line. Toss goes to Hubbard coming to the near side and Hubbard is gonna be corralled by Max Richardson who drops him for a big loss. The pursuit, Woodward Academy on that play. War Eagles defensive unit, take a look. And Richardson leads the way. There they are stringing that play out and he comes in to make the stop. There's Max Richardson, the six foot, 230 pound senior. ESPN three star ranked the number 33 inside linebacker in the college, in, in the country and committed to Boston College. That was his sixth tackle for loss this season. Third down and 11. Intercepted nearly again. Max Richardson had the pick and dropped it. He's all over the field. Either he's bringing pressure on the quarterback, he's stringing out the run. This time he drops back into coverage and should have had an interception there. So fourth down and 11. Let's see what Sandy Creek elects to do here. Their regular kicker, Benji Rutland, is out with a pulled muscle. Javen Hawes, their junior, is their field goal kicker, but he has not attempted a field goal this season. So they're going to go for it on fourth down and 11. This would be a big stop for the Woodward defense. They're going for the home run and looking to the corner of the end zone, and Caleb Slaughter cannot come up with it, and the ball will go over on downs. So how about this Woodward defense? They've been one of the big stories here tonight, Sam. They come up with a big stop after the interception by Javen Jackson had given Sandy Creek the ball at the War Eagles 28. And maybe Bryant Walker wanted a little more time to get that pass off, but he was feeling the pressure. K.J. Phillips in coming in, putting a big hit on him just as he let it go. So maybe he rushed it just a tad because of the pressure. Incomplete. Ball goes over. So Woodward Academy gets it back. First and 10 at their own 19-yard line after they keep not only Sandy Creek from getting into the end zone, but from scoring it all. Throw 
Glover going to keep. He already had one 37-yard run tonight. Glover quickly on the ground. Javon Jackson making that tackle right there. And as we mentioned, this War Eagle offense has had to improvise and learn to do some different things without Holyfield in the mix. And so it seems like that's one of the plays they call with great confidence and something that Glover's had some time to work on, and we're seeing it here tonight. And here's Javon Jackson, 5'11", 180-pound senior, ESPN three-star safety. Committed to Duke. He committed to Duke just two and a half weeks ago. 17 tackles on the season. Already has an interception tonight, giving him five for the season. And it looks like a timeout has been called by Woodward Academy as they face a second down and six. And we'll take a timeout as well. Four minutes into the second quarter. It's been all Woodward Academy thus far. War Eagles on top, 14 0. from Forest Park High School sparked an interest in me to really push me in education, uh, to be more than just a student athlete. You know, each and every day she challenged me to be a leader, a role model, and somebody positive in our community. I can never uh, thank her enough for, for, for what all she's done for me. And there are teachers just like Miss Garner all over the state of Georgia today. insurance industry is a relationship business. I try to be out in the community, you know, as much as I possibly can. We're local agents in the community. We're part of the community. I love doing business in the town that I live in. My clients are my friends. They can just step in my office and say hello. That's very important to me. We want to be available to them in case they need us. You get a lot of reward personally going home at night knowing that you've taken care of folks. Seven forty-seven to play in the first half in Woodward Academy with a 14 to nothing lead on Sandy Creek trying to win in the series for a second consecutive year. Trying to reestablish the dominance <laughs> or take away from what Sandy Creek has been able to do in this region for the last seven years. They really have. They've been the dominance that we mentioned earlier, gave them the name Sultans of the South Side. And we say that not just kidding, they really have been the dominant team on the South Side of Atlanta. But this Whooford Academy program is saying, you know, hey, you know, we won last year. We won the region for the first time in many, many, many years. You know, they, they came just a heartbeat away from getting all the way to the Georgia Dome. They feel like they can get there this year. And tonight's game is a big one for them. They can be in the driver's seat, uh, possibly getting that region championship for the second consecutive year. Well, Woodward will close out their season against Carrollton. Carrollton plays Sandy Creek as well next week. And Carrollton currently on top of the region at 3-0. and Tackle made right there by Elijah Gilmore, the Mike linebacker, 33 tackles on the season for Gilmore. He's really the only linebacker, true linebacker, they have in their defensive 11. The other two linebackers that we talked about off the top, Harper and Trapper, really DBs that they've moved down into the linebacker spot. So third down and three, ball at the 25. Heavy rush, Glover gets rid of it and is caught. For a first down and more, Josh Johnson, foot race, and finally caught inside the 25-yard line. How about the catch and run by Josh Johnson, the War Eagles' leading wide receiver. That goes for 49 yards. Coach Hunt loves this guy, and on this play, he shows you why. Catches, he's a pinball. He's bouncing off one defender here, gets off away from another one, and looks like he may go all the way. Look at the catch. Bouncing off the defender there. Great running. Josh Johnson came into this game with 23 receptions. One of the big playmakers. Like you said, guys who've had to emerge while Holyfield has been out. He's one of them. Josh Johnson, 5'10", 170-pound junior wide receiver. He's been offered by Georgia Southern, Miami of Ohio, and Furman. Came into the ball game with the team leading 23 catches for 397 and five touchdowns. Glover on the run. And not much doing right there for Glover as he's tackled by Antonio Trapp. 
on this drive, Woodward Academy's offense is showing off their versatility. Wow, they really are. They really are showing that they're not just Elijah Holyfield, and it makes you wonder what things look like going forward for them with Holyfield back healthy now with this offense. They're, they're really clicking and showing you a lot of different things they can do. Yeah, it makes you wonder just how good are they going to be offensively for the rest of the season now that they have Holyfield back. They have developed weapons that they might not have developed if Holyfield had never gotten hurt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're seeing it on this possession. Very impressive Woodward Academy offense and defense so far in this first half. They have dominated this game. Glover got a man out there, and it's caught for the touchdown. Antone Williams with the touchdown catch. 22-yard touchdown catch by Antone Williams. And Woodward has taken a 20 to nothing lead. And Williams, the guy we talk about, of course, he's on his way to do great defensive player. He, we got with this type of ability, you had to give him some time on the offensive side of the ball, give him a chance with some touches. There he is, making the catch for another score. And I do believe in that whole possession, 13 didn't touch the ball not once, no. not a single time. That tells you a lot about this offense. Rodriguez on for the PAT, and that is no good. So Rodriguez misses just his second PAT attempt of the season. And Woodward with a 20 to nothing lead on the 22 yard touchdown pass from Glover to Antone Williams. And Antone Williams, the six foot 170 pound senior ESPN three star cornerback committed to Duke. 13 catches for 210 and a touchdown coming into Tonight's ball game, that's his second touchdown catch of the season, and it caps a five-play, 81-yard drive. Let's check in with John Nelson. There are three teams in double-A that are undefeated, so let's spend the magic words and kick it and show you one of them. Benedictine in Region 2 double-A, they are rolling against Groves right now. You see it's 41 to nothing, so Benedictine well on their way to still being the number one seed in Region 2 AA, one of the top-ranked teams in AA overall. As we said, coming into tonight, only three undefeated teams, and one of them, your defending champs, back upstairs. Thanks, Nelly. I can't say enough about how impressed I am with this Woodward team. Came in ranked number two in the state, and they certainly look as good as that. And Jackson will not be able to return this out of the end zone, and so Sandy Creek, who's had really only one good scoring opportunity tonight after they got the pick by Jackson. Right earlier in this quarter and came up empty. Now down, now down three touchdowns as they touch the ball with five and a half minutes to play in the half. And no break as far as field position now. They're going to have to go the length of the field. And that was one of the things we talked about early in the game. One of the things that Woodward Academy is going to make Sandy Creek mm -hmm. have to do is go the length of the, uh, length of the field. And that's what they're going to have to do now. Yeah. Well, Woodward hasn't had a problem doing that. Their last two touchdown drives have been 80 and 81 yards against a Sandy Creek defense that had surrendered just 19 points in the first half the entire season. So Woodward, in 17 minutes of this first half, has scored more points on the Sandy Creek defense than they had given up in their first seven games. That's remarkable. That's remarkable. Lighten them up. Kobe Sandell with another big tackle. That's his second tackle for loss in this ball game. You know, and Sandell was a guy that was playing running back for him, too, while Holyfield was out. It was really kind of their big bruiser running back. And, you know, they get to, you know, play Sandell. Don't worry about him so much. Let him play that Sam linebacker with Holyfield back. Marvin Hubbard. Got to watch out for him. He's the state 100-meter champ, and he just showed you why. Look at that run. Man, he got one tackle to break. And then a guy that runs a 10-500, you ain't going to catch him. And that's why we said at the outset of the show, they wanted to slow them down to make them grind their way up the field and not give up the big explosive play. There it is right there. Your TCSG touchdown replay got out of the tackle of Max Richardson. And when you run a 10-500, who's going to catch you? J.R. Pace right there, and he just walked right away from him, all the way down the field for the touchdown. Impressive run, great speed. Marvin Hubbard, just a junior, 81-yard touchdown run for Hubbard. 
Hawes on for the PAT. Seven of seven on his PATs this season, make it a clean eight for eight. And Sandy Creek finally gets on the board. Here he's coming at you again. And like you said, 14, Richardson has him, but he gets away and just runs away from everybody. With that kind of speed, you will not catch him. Wow. I mean, that's a guy right there who's got Olympic-like speed. And Marvin Hubbard, 5'10", 180-pound junior, offered by Memphis and Furman. You see his numbers for the season. He was averaging 9.6 yards per carry coming into tonight's game, leading the team with seven touchdowns, including a kickoff return for touchdown and 72 yards per game in all-purpose yardage. Hubbard, along with Ian Barnes, Corey Banks, and Eric Swinney, who's now at Ole Miss, they were the state's four by 100 meter relay champions last year for all classifications. They were the fastest four by 100 team, regardless of 6A, 5A, 4A, single A. And he's a big reason why. Yeah, he showed you why. He really did. Big play, explosive play when his team really needed it to lift them back into this game. He gets a chance to watch himself on the replay over there on the sideline. So Sandy Creek gets a little bit closer into this game with that touchdown run. Slips at the five and his knee hit the ground. Oh, what a bad break right there for Woodward Academy and Antone Williams as he fielded that kickoff. And they're going to be a deep hole at the six yard line. It's really unfortunate. He's backpedaling there and then he starts to come forward. Hmm. His foot slides and there the knee goes down. So the first really bad field position for Woodward Academy it comes right on the heels of that 81-yard touchdown run by Marvin Hubbard. So perhaps a chance for the Sandy Creek defense to come up with a big play. Maybe a chance for it here, a chance for a little bit of a, of a momentum swing if Sandy Creek can do something big defensively. So first and 10 from the six. Very little running right, room right there for Elijah Holyfield that time. Not much. They were there. Stacked things up. Nice first down stop for Sandy Creek. You know, head coach John Hunt said it was very difficult for him to game plan this week because he didn't know how much or if any of Elijah Holyfield he would have for the game plan. And Holyfield didn't practice with the team until Wednesday for the first time in over five weeks. Looks like the game plan's been okay, though. Yeah, it does. Holyfield trying to get outside. Ooh, big smack. Michael Jenkins, the strong safety, comes up and puts a lick on Holyfield. And it's going to be third down. And here's what it sounded like down on the field. Woo. Oh, yeah. Jenkins gives up 25 pounds to Holyfield. 5'10", 180 junior with 32 tackles in the season and three interceptions coming into tonight's game. He brought every ounce of it on that one. Third down and nine. Play action. Glover going up top. Got a man out there. And it's dropped by Josh Johnson. Wow. Josh Johnson had a touchdown catch in his hands I'm and let it go right through. Impressed with Glover and the way he just rides back and just lets it out there. Beautiful pass, beautiful ball. And Johnson's there, just can't haul it in. Mm. That's the kind of play that can come back and haunt you. And now Woodward's going to have to punt out of the back of their own end zone. Martin Rodriguez will punt. Jacob Robertson is typically their punter, but he's got a bum shoulder, even though he had a touchdown catch earlier in this game. That's a nice bounce for Woodward. Keeps rolling inside the 40 and down to the 37-yard line, a 56-yard kick in total. And Sandy Creek goes back on offense with around three minutes to play 
in the first half. That putt, not a thing of beauty, but you'll take it. Every time. Great roll. Great bounce. So they're going to go Wildcat here as Bryant Walker is on the sideline. So Javon Jackson, who's their Wildcat quarterback, he'll also throw the ball. He's thrown the ball nine times in the season. He's now in there taking the snaps. Marvin Hubbard, they fake the speed sweep to him. Now we got whistles. False start. Offense, five-yard penalty, first down. So a five-yard penalty. You see Bob Preston, our referee, giving us the call from the field. So first and 15 now from the 32-yard line. Jackson stays in there as the Wildcat quarterback. Zone read, where he'll keep it. And Jackson not going anywhere. Wiggins, who had an interception earlier in the game, drops him right at the line of scrimmage. Not fooled on that play. 17, Wiggins makes the stop, and Phillips comes in to help him out with that one. And Bryant Walker will check back into the ball game at quarterback. So second down and 14. Walker six of nine passing for 47 yards so far in this game. He did throw his first interception of the season in the second quarter. Play action going up top streaking downfield. Banks was open. They couldn't connect. I love it. These teams are not bashful about stretching the field. No, no. And Walker had some time. Uh, uh, other times they've had some pressure coming on him, but that time he had some time, just didn't make his, make his connection. As you take a look at the top five scoring offenses in 4A, led by Buford at the top, then Thompson and Cartersville Woodward at 39 points per game, and Sandy Creek right behind them at 38.7. And the top six scoring defenses in the state, led by Sandy Creek at 6.1, although they've already surrendered 20 here tonight. Buford Spalding, Cartersville, Jonesboro at number five, and Woodward Academy at number six, just under 12 points per game. Play action again and looking over on the far sideline. It is caught. Nice catch. No, dropped incomplete. Slaughter couldn't come up with it. Once again, Brian Walker had time. He gets it out there, and Slaughter just, ah. Looks like he had it off, but it comes out. Yep. Slaughter, the junior wide receiver. That's the second time they tried to go to him, tried to go for him, go to him on that fourth and long, and they threw it to him in the end zone. Couldn't get that one either, and so fourth down in a punting situation here for Sandy Creek. Major Weems punting for the third time. And Jeffrey Hubbard standing deep for Woodward Academy. Weems, ball goes straight up in the air. And bounces backwards. And so the ball will be deadened at the 50-yard line and great field position for Woodward and lots of time for them. That was just a 19-yard kick by Weems and gives Woodward Academy a very short field, 50 yards with 148 left in the half. So this Sandy Creek defense has a chore on their hands to keep Woodward from getting into the end zone again. That was the thing they'd love to do. They'd love to get in scoring range and get something on the board at least once more going to the locker room as they start at midfield. Ryan Glover, impressive first half, four of eight passing for 135, and he's run the ball four times for 46 yards. Quarterback draw, and Glover down to about the 42-yard line. Elijah Gilmore making that tackle. Second tackle of the night for Gilmore. Brings up a second down and one from the 41. They're quickly back up to the line. War Eagles have only one timeout remaining. Defense, 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 defense. 
Glover given time coming this way and nearly intercepted by Ian Barnes. Barnes laid out, nearly picked it off, and it's going to be third down and short. Look at that ball coming out there. Look, it may have been deflected coming out, or Glover may have been rushed. Take a little look at it. Hands out. Ball have been just look like it may have been deflected coming Might out of there. And Barnes had a chance to make a play on it. Yeah, Nathan Brown, number 32, the rush defensive end, might have tipped that ball just a little bit. Now third down and one with 1.14 to play in the half. Woodward, three of four on their third down so far tonight. Handoff, Holyfield has the first down. Tough running, <laughs> tough running. Holyfield, eight carries for 29 yards in the first half. And a touchdown. So first and 10, clock continues to run. We approach a minute to play here in the first half. Glover fires, guns it, it is caught by Josh Johnson. Another big catch by Johnson. And a flag down at the 38. It's a 35 yard pitch and catch. Here's Bob Preston. And as we're downfield, player lined up, was covered up, went downfield. It's a five-yard penalty. Replay the down. Mm. Mm. Wow, that erases a 35-yard catch. And John Hunt wants to know exactly what happened there. You heard the explanation. The end was covered up and was downfield on the play. So ball back at the 40 now, first and 15, and clock running again, approaching 50 seconds. Heavy rush, Glover stands in there, drops it off, complete. And Antone, or actually Josh Johnson again with the catch. Johnson with the catch and, and doing the smart thing, getting out of bounds to stop the clock. Here's another look. It's crossing right in front, makes the catch, picks up the yards, gets out of bounds. 14-yard pickup, 37 seconds left in the half. Second down and one from the 26th, second catch of the night for Johnson, who dropped a sure touchdown catch earlier, and just a few moments ago had a 35-yard reception, a race by a penalty. Glover going up top, end zone, it's caught by Robertson again. Second touchdown catch for Robertson. That one is for 26 yards, and it is 26 to 26-7. Here's a look at it here. The pass is out there, and it's away. He beats Barnes deep in the end zone, over the shoulder, great catch. Twenty six to seven. Rodriguez converts twenty seven to seven. Woodward with a twenty to point twenty point lead. We talked about Woodward Academy putting some points on the board before halftime, and here it is. We didn't know exactly how it would go. But puts it up top right there. Robertson there to pull it in in the back of the end zone. His second touchdown of the game. Second touchdown catch of the night for Jacob Robertson, who had only six catches for the season because he's been sidelined for injury most of the year. Robertson, the 6'1", 160-pound senior, suffered a broken collarbone in the Cam Newton passing league over the summer. Missed the first four games of the season, came back, he's played a couple of games, and then hurt his shoulder just last week, but he looks like he's close to 100% tonight. You see 
the ESPN three-star wide receiver. He's got 17 offers, Sam, including Tennessee, Miami, and North Carolina. He's giving them a lot to look at tonight. Two great touchdown receptions. Short kickoff going to be taken at the 20-yard line. And the ball is fumbled, and fortunately for Sandy Creek, it is covered by Michael Jenkins. That was nearly another disaster for Sandy Creek that's had too many of them in this first half. Antonio Trapp went down awkwardly after that, and the ball just came, uh, ball just came out. Well, it'll be interesting to see, Sam, whether they take a shot here or they just uh, kneel down. They've got Javon Jackson back in there at the Wildcats, so unlikely they're going to throw, I would think. They hand off instead to Hubbard. Hubbard with the 81-yard touchdown run in this quarter. He steps out of bounds, stopping the clock with 21 seconds. Here's another look at that uh, kickoff where Trapp fields the ball, and then he slips and loses the ball. Yeah, he's trying to make a cut. Let's go down. And, you know, awkwardly. And in this day and age of replay, they don't have that, of course, in high school. It looked like the ground caused the fumble anyway. Jackson on the carry on what might have been the final play of this first half. Stops the clock to move the sticks. So a first down for Sandy Creek at the 38-yard line. Clock running again. Let's see if they run a quick play. And Jackson scrambling, going to throw it as far as he can up there for Banks and broken up at the last moment. Broken up by Sage Sharkey, the cornerback, and that'll be the end of the first half. What a first half for this Woodford team. Wow, you're not kidding. Well, Sandy Creek hasn't left the field yet. We have a penalty. Pass interference on Sandy Creek, so that will end the first half. And you're not kidding. What a half for Woodward Academy. They dominate on offense and on defense. Asi aside from the 81-yard touchdown run by Hubbard, that half belonged to Woodward Academy. And John Nelson standing by with War Eagles head coach John Hunt. Thank you very much down here with the coach. Let me ask it this way. What didn't go right in the first half? Well, we dropped a couple balls right there. One of them was a sure touchdown, and one uh, we tipped one for an interception. Those are two things right there. But other than that, you know, the guys are executing real well. That's the way we tried to stay. And we talked about all week. We had a good week of practice, and we just just go out here and execute. If we execute, we'll be okay. And, uh, and for the most part, we're doing a good job of that. And at the same time, getting 13 reintegrated into the offense, what do you think about him in the first 24? Well, I mean, when he's in there, he's always dangerous. It was good to see him, you know, uh, bounce that thing for a touchdown there. That was good for his confidence, and uh, we'll, we'll continue to sort of manage him through the game. And uh, but but you know this game's not over yet. That's a they don't they don't win all those ball games over at Sandy Creek for nothing. They're a good team. We got to come out and play another solid half. Thanks for your time, Coach. All right, thank you. All right, that's it with the coach. I guess the halftime show officially starts right now. Thank you, John Nelson. The GPB Football Fridays in Georgia Halftime Show will continue in just a second. We'll hear from marching bands for both Sandy Creek and Woodward Academy, and we'll see what you are talking about online. John Nelson will put the principals to the test in our Are You Smarter segment, and then I will put you to the test in our Law Abiding Citizen segment. That and much more as we continue the GPB Halftime Show. Don't go anywhere. Here, beauty is a lot more than skin deep. For more than 100 years, we have focused on creating individual success stories. This is a place where professors are mentors, competition is cheered, collaboration counts, experience is hands-on, and connections are lifelong. VSU, over 100 majors, championship athletics, focused on your success. You exercise, you choose the salad, occasionally. But staying well, physically, financially, emotionally, is hard on your own. 
So Cigna's got your back and your knees 24-7. Cigna's there to answer your questions. Or when you need some coaching. In sickness and in health, Cigna's there, helping you to get well and stay well. That's having a partner who's with you all the way. Cigna. The annual Lights, Lights celebration kicks off the holiday season in historic downtown Moultrie, Thanksgiving night, November 26th at 6 p.m. Brought to you by City of Moultrie Main Street Program and Downtown Moultrie Association. DowntownMoultrie.com. Providing safe, affordable, and reliable electricity requires more than bucket trucks and utility poles. These are the faces behind your power. For more than 75 years, Georgia's nonprofit, member owned electric cooperatives have been on a mission to brighten the lives of more than four and a half million Georgians. We are Georgia's EMCs, proudly serving our members, lighting the way. During this performance, one student will drop out of high school. Be there for your big finish. We are live at Colquitt Stadium in College Park, Georgia. It's halftime of the Sandy Creek Woodward Academy game. The Sandy Creek High School Marching Band is taking the field. Woodward Academy leading this one 27 to seven and time now to check in with Jackie and see what fans are talking about online. Jackie. Mark, we've got a little game that we're going to try to get fans involved in at home. Don't forget, guys, you can follow us on all social media platforms at GPB Sports. So be sure to find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. So we have a little game here. It's called Caption This. Hashtag Caption This. We've got whoever has the most creative caption for this photo, we want you to send those to us on Twitter at GPB Sports. And the most creative ones will make it here on air. Also, the winner will get some GPB swag. I know, it's very exciting. So most creative captions, send them here to us at GPB Sports. Caption this photo right here. OK, moving on. Now, earlier this week, I asked Ryan Glover, quarterback here uh, for Woodward, you know, what, what are some of your superstitions? What are your game day meals? He says, I've worn the same left glove every game since ninth grade. My only response is that I hope he's washed it at least once or twice since then. OK, then we have Megan Wallace, who's chiming in, says, go KJ right here, KJ Phillips. Your favorite little buddy is cheering you on. Shelby loves you. Hashtag Woodward Academy. Guys, this is the stuff that we love to see here on GPB. Send us your photos, whatever you're doing to watch the game, pregame meals, superstitions. Get involved with us at GPB. Be sports on Facebook, Twitter, also on Snapchat. That's the newest platform. So get connected with us because we want to hear how you're watching the game. Time now for another round of Are You Smarter? John Nelson is standing alongside the principal of Sandy Creek High School, Robert Hunter. John. Thank you very much. It is time to catch up with first name Mr. Last name Hunter because we are in the principal's office, a place with which I am very familiar and it is time to play Are You Smarter? But first, what's going on at Sandy Creek these days? Well, you know, Sandy Creek already has a tradition of uh, excellence when it comes to athletics, also the uh, performing arts. So what we're trying to do is rev up our academic program a bit and we're doing a study to bring the uh, international baccalaureate to Sandy Creek High School. All right, good luck with the IBS. It is time to play the game with the question, are you smarter? I have not seen it, so we'll see it together for the first time. An official teaser was released this week for one of the most highly anticipated movie sequels in a long time. Was it for A, Hunger Games, Banquet of Evil, B, Star Wars, The Force Awakens, or C, Dumb and Dumber, -er -er -er, hashtag Jeopardy? I'd say B, Star Wars. That is correct. A little more detail. 
owed me $16 million. Saw the trailer on ESPN's Monday Night Football for The Force Awakens during halftime of the Eagles-Giants game. The movie opens December 18th. Fans have already broken online trying to get tickets with us. Thanks for hanging out with us on Are You Smarter? Thank you very much. Let's send it back over to the set for more. We'll have more in a bit. All right, John. Right now, the force is with Woodward Academy, leading this one 27-7. Part of the pageantry of high school's football game is, of course, listening in on the marching bands. Let's check out the Sandy Creek Marching Band, brought to you by Regions Bank. Tonight's show theme is Best of Times. The song's The Best of Times. Jump, let's groove tonight, come sail away, and rock in the paradise. And that's the Sandy Creek Marching Band brought to you by Regents Bank. Now let's check in with Jackie. She's got the long arm of the law as always. Jackie? Thank you, Mark. Jake joins me now, and unfortunately, you do have to answer a question as to where, whether or not it's a law, but we're talking about Dublin, okay? Dublin, Georgia. Are cars allowed to be driven through playgrounds in Dublin, Georgia? No. Right. He's right. Okay, see who did or did not get that question right in our Law Abiding Citizen segment this week. It's time for another round of our Law Abiding Citizen segment, and today we are in the coach's office. I've got Eddie Householder, Elijah Gilmore, linebacker coach, linebacker here at Sandy Creek High School, and guys, are you ready for this? I guess so. <laughs> I'm gonna win. All right, Elijah says he's gonna win. Let's see. First question, in Dublin, cars may not be driven through playgrounds. Is this true or false? True, true, correct, yay, ding, ding. Okay, you guys are even right now. All right, this one also in Dublin, rocks may not be thrown at birds. Is this true or false? He says true, he says false. It actually is still a law, so Elijah in the lead right now. All right, last one in Fayette County, it is illegal to water plants on Sundays. Is this true or false? He says true, he says true, it's actually false. Sorry, Coach. Elijah got you two to one. You're going to have to pick your poison. Squats or push-ups? I guess the squats. Okay. All right. How about it? I'll take care of him at practice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Go for it. All right, guys. Go ahead. Sportsman life. Handshake. Yeah. All right. There you go. See you this afternoon. <laughs> Thankfully, Jake here didn't have to do any squats or push-ups. You're, you're lucky for that, but I'm not so sure. I want to ask Elijah how practice went that afternoon, that's for sure. <laughs> I, bet you, I bet you he was doing a few up-downs, up-downs, up-downs if lot. I know Coach Household. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you very much, Jackie. Coming up on the Football Fridays in Georgia Halftime Show, we will hear from the Woodward Academy Marching Band, plus John Nelson visits Warner Robins, Georgia, and Houston County High School for his back roads and backfield segment. Plus, Jackie will get the 411 from some very proud parents. It's all ahead on the Football Fridays in Georgia Halftime Show. We are live from Colquitt Stadium in College Park, Georgia. The Woodruff Academy War Eagles lead Sandy Creek 27-7 at the half. Questions. Can't wait until morning. So I'm one of many nurses at Cigna with answers anytime, day or night. I'm Lauren. And I've got your back. As a strong, stable bank, Regions is always looking for opportunities to boost the vitality of our communities. In addition to offering financial solutions for our customers, we are committed to supporting local initiatives and organizations that help our neighborhoods thrive. Regions is proud to be a partner with GPB in building a better Georgia. and outdoors are back to the little something Walker for everybody. Fantastic natural history and it starts in on a Georgia beach. 
catch all the fun, action, and beauty now on Thursday nights. Georgia Traveler at 8 and Georgia Outdoors at 8.30. Thursdays on GPB. Today, companies in the aerospace, advanced manufacturing, and film industries need skilled workers, and the earning potential is high. Go Build Georgia can show you where the jobs are and what skills you need to get them. And the Technical College System of Georgia has fast, affordable training for these great paying careers. Build your blueprint for success at GoBuildGeorgia.com and look to the Technical College System of Georgia to put your plan into action. It's hard to believe that something so small, so delicate, can grow to be so vital to Georgia families, businesses, and our economy. Agriculture is Georgia's number one industry, and Ag Georgia Farm Credit is proud to have helped Georgia grow for generations. Look for the Georgia Grown logo at your local grocery store and thank a farmer the next time you sit down for a meal. Ag Georgia Farm Credit, helping Georgia grow for generations. I'm not sick. I'm not sick. She's perfectly healthy. Cigna covers preventive care. That's having your back. Welcome back to Football Fridays and Georgia's Halftime Show. We're live at Woodward Academy, where right now the War Eagles are leading the Fighting Patriots of Sandy Creek by a 27-7 score. We will hear from the Woodward Academy band and also give you scores from around the state. But first, it's time for another round of the game show that's sweeping the nation. Well, maybe just the state. It's time for another round of Are You Smarter with John Nelson. Thank you very much, Jackie. Yes, it is time to catch up with Dr. Gully and find out just how smart both of us are. But first and foremost, most importantly, what's going on at Woodward these days? Well, we've got a lot happening. We're so fortunate with great faculty and students. Every day we're celebrating something, but we're preparing mostly now for Sunday, November the 1st, when we have an open house for prospective families at two o'clock, and we'd love for people who want to know more about us to come and learn about us. All right, that is how you do it. Catch up with them on the website. For more, it is time to play Are You Smarter? with question number two, a question I have not seen. Oprah Winfrey purchased 10% of a struggling corporation this week, causing its stock prices to, uh, I would say, inflate, soar, however you want to, what company was no it? Was it, intended. thank you, A, hey, was it A Weight Watchers, B Lean Cuisine, or C Thighmaster? I think it is A Weight Watchers. That is correct. Your additional information, Weight Watchers, Oprah says, I believe in the program so much I decided to invest in the company and partner in its evolution. You get a partner, and you get a partner, and you get a partner. Everybody gets a partner. Thanks for hanging out with us. Thank you very much. We're glad to have you here. Thanks. We'll send it back over to the set. High school football games are entertaining even at halftime, and the band has a lot to do with that. So now we're going to listen into the Woodward Academy marching band brought to you by Regions Bank. Great job by the Woodruff Marching Band, brought to you by Regents Bank. Now, here are some scores for some of the top teams around the state we're following on the Georgia EMC scoreboard. It is Grayson right now, ranked number two and undefeated. They are beating Decula 40 to nothing at the half. Roswell, no trouble with Woodstock right now, 27 to nothing in the second quarter. It is Archer leading Central Gwinnett at the half, 35 to six. 
Collins Hill trailing Mill Creek by a touchdown, 21 to 14 in the second. And McEachern, two touchdowns better than Kennesaw Mountain, 14 to zip in the first. Elsewhere, Peachtree Ridge leads Norcross, 17 to zip in the second. It is Walton over Milton in a big rivalry, 14 to three in the second. Northside Warner Robins over Grovetown, 21 seven in the second quarter. Top ranked Cartersville leads Southeast Whitfield, 28 to three. And Calhoun top ranked in 3A over Murray County, 35 to nothing. It's going to be an action-packed season here on Football Fridays in Georgia. So here is the schedule brought to you by the Georgia EMC. Next week, we will bring you the Archer at Decula game. And then the final game of the regular season will be an exciting end to the regular season. It is yet to be determined. So you can check our Facebook page, GPB Sports, when that matchup is announced. Then we are with you all the way through the playoffs and then on to the Georgia Dome for the state championship games on December 11th and 12th. GPB is your home for high school football all season long. John Nelson joins us now for another edition of Back Roads and Backfields brought to you by the Georgia Cotton Commission. The natural choice for t-shirts. And you headed out to uh, check in a very talented Houston County team out of Warner Robins, Georgia. What'd you find out? One of the toughest regions in the state in 5A is Region 2. Four of these teams, pretty much top 15. And the new guy of the Houston County Bears. Here's what it's like for them being the new guy in one of the toughest places in Central Georgia. The Houston County Bears have high expectations for themselves after exiting last year's 5A season two games early in the quarterfinals. Let's just say they've been motivated in 2015 with a 6-1 start in one of the toughest regions around, 2-5A. We picked it up a lot, uh, worked probably harder than we ever have. Uh, everybody got bigger, faster, stronger. Uh, and over the summer we did a lot of 7-on-7, seven seven, got our passing game real strong, and uh, I think we moved with a lot of momentum in this season. While a lot of the coaches on the staff have understand that 10-3 and three is not where we want to be, it was really exciting for our kids, and it really it really uh, gave us a good boost going into the offseason. It showed them that the work that they've been putting in pays off, you know, that we can go from 7-4 and four the first year to 10-3 and three the next year, and that the things we've been asking them to do uh, works. Coach Lasseter has built a lot in a short time, and the lessons from last year have stayed. Just really, whenever things get rough, not to not to get down on ourselves. Cause that's really where uh, uh, things went bad. Because all the games we lost, we had to play four quarters, so we really hadn't been able to do that. And whatever we have to get in that fourth quarter, we have to learn to toughen up and uh, get through it. And the squad, short of their loss to Jones County last week, has kept up the pace, scoring more than 30 three times and more than 40 for the other three wins. But the regular season finale with Northside looms, and there's work to be done. It'll be clicking on all cylinders. Offense has to be clicking, defense has to be clicking, special teams, all aspects of the game. Quarterback Jake Fromm drives the offense and is the reigning offensive player of the year in the state. But there are more Fromms in the wings to keep everything moving after he graduates and keep him focused while he's still around. Uh, they can always go home and uh, tell mom and dad stuff to have it in practice at the dinner table. You know, uh, what Jake did wrong, how many interceptions he <laughs> threw at practice, you know, or he had to run after practice, you know, stuff like that. You know, so they're always there. I always get to tell mom and dad stuff. But, uh, you know, it's, it's fun having them out there, you know, uh, you know, get to motivate them to be out there and uh, just help them, you know, get better. Houston County's part of a log jam right now for the two, the three, and the four seeds, and they've got a game against Greenbrier tonight. We'll let you know what's going on in the postgame show. All right, back roads and backfields brought to you by the Georgia Cotton Commission. The natural choice for Georgia. All right, now let's check in with Jackie with another edition of Rent Check where we check in with the parents of one of the top players. And who you got tonight, Jackie? Thank you, Mark. I'm joined by the Richardson family. We've got Max, Donna, and Derry Richardson. Their son and brother is Max Richardson, number 14 for Woodward. And are you guys ready to play Rent Check? Oh, yes, yeah, let's absolutely. do it. They're pumped up. Okay, here we go. If he could be any superhero, who would he be? I see Spider-Man. Anybody else got anything? Superhero. Frozone from The Incredibles. Okay, all right, we'll pretend that didn't happen. Okay, I don't know. That, your guess is as good as mine. All right, and then what is his favorite football memory? St. Pius be down, honey. Mom, moms always know. That's right, that's one for mom. Okay, and if he could meet any famous person, who would he want it to be? If he could meet? Yes, any famous person. Jesus. President Obama. Ray Lewis. Mark Wahlberg. Okay, all right. And favorite pregame meal. Maybe we'll get this one. Salad. Steak and eggs. 
um, cheeseburger? Beef and rice. Oh, okay, okay, you know what? Yeah, we'll make some halftime adjustments, but you still get some tickets to the College Football <laughs> Hall of Fame, <laughs> and you get some GPB swag. There you go. Maybe he was trying to fake you guys out on that one. I don't know. You might have to talk to him about that. Maybe tr <laughs> made, change dinner up a little bit. <laughs> All right, Mark, we'll send it back to you. Hey, those guys, that family's got to go right from rent check to the family feud. They're great on TV. They're fantastic. I know. They're great. All right, time now for our career play of the game, brought to you by the Technical College System of Georgia. Want a career in the manufacturing or construction industry? Get a free education in precision manufacturing or welding and joining at the Technical College System of Georgia. Workers in manufacturing and construction are urgently needed in Georgia. A free education in 10 high demand industries awaits you at the Technical College System of Georgia. Change your life. TCSG.edu. It's time for the second half. Time to toss it back up to the broadcast booth. Matt Stewart and the birthday boy, Sam Crenshaw. Take it away for the second half, fellas. Man, he is really celebrating his 21st birthday in style here <laughs> you know, tonight. Hey, it doesn't get any better, does it? Woodward leading Sandy Creek 27-7. And what a dominating performance by the War Eagles offensively and defensively in that first half, Sam. We were wondering how things were going to go tonight with Elijah Holyfield returning, how much of him we would see how effective he would be. But the thing we weren't prepared to see was the versatility of the War Eagles offensive attack. So many weapons that they've developed during this time that he's been away. Yeah, Ryan Glover, impressive first half, 175 yards passing, three touchdown passing. He looks very sharp, very impressed. First chance to see that junior quarterback for me this season. And he's been impressive. And this Woodward defense has shut Sandy Creek down. The only big play they hit him with was that 81-yard touchdown run by Marvin Hubbard. But other than that, they've done a very good job of keeping this Sandy Creek offense in check. And we knew good things were going to come from Max Richardson, the guy who anchors things in the middle, but the play up front has been the most impressive thing by the Warrior defense. 27 to seven, Woodward, Woodward with the 20 point lead on Sandy Creek will come back and get the second half started in just a moment. Cotton contributes $2.5 billion to the state's economy annually. It takes more than 60 cotton gins and manufacturers to bring cotton into our everyday lives. Kids always like to stay in the pool a little too long. And when they do get out, covered in goosebumps, you feel the urge to wrap them up. The cozy embrace of cotton does the job. Cotton, the natural choice for Georgia. The new College Football Hall of Fame and Chick-fil-A fan experience puts fans closer to the game experience. Featuring over 30,000 square feet of college football interactive exhibits. Tickets available at cfbhall.com. Your local Alpha agents are proud to join viewers like you in making this programming possible. We're local agents in the community. We're part of the community. I love doing business in the town that I live in. My clients are my friends. They can just step in my office and say hello. That's very important to me. We want to be available to them in case they need us. You get a lot of reward personally going home at night knowing that you've taken care of folks. Protecting our communities, neighbor to neighbor, for almost 70 years. Alpha Insurance. Academy getting ready for the second 24 minutes here with head coach Chip Walker of Sandy Creek. I guess if you could personify that first half, it was missed opportunities, penalties, and drops. Yeah, you know, we uh, didn't come out and play very good to start with, and, and you know, they took advantage of it, and they made some plays, and we didn't make some plays, and that kind of boiled down to, to where we are now. All right, good luck in the second half. Thank you. All right, we'll send it upstairs to Matt and Sam, and the birthday boy has highlights and stats and things, right? Yeah, you bet we do. Let's take a look at those first half highlights. It all started very first offensive snap for Woodward. 40-yard touchdown pass from Glover to Robertson. Drew the offense in. They were looking for the run with Holyfield, obviously. And then Holyfield on the next possession bounced outside for a 13-yard touchdown run. And, you know, 
late first quarter, Woodward had a 14-0 lead. They made it a 20-0 lead in the second quarter on the pass from Glover to Williams. Great play, but here's the big play, the home run play that you have to watch out for against Sandy Creek. Yeah, Marvin Hubbard, that was the one big highlight for Sandy Creek, the speedster down the sideline for the 81-yard touchdown run. Woodward would add one more touchdown with 31 seconds to play in the half. Glover hooking up with Robertson again and a 27-7 lead as you take a look at the first half stats and 259 yards of total offense for Woodward to Sandy Creek's 135. And there is Will Glover. Impressive first half for the Woodward Jr. quarterback. Six foot, 180 pound junior. Been offered by Georgia State. I'm sure this young man is gonna get plenty more offers. Six of 11 passing in the first half for 175 yards, three touchdowns, one interception, and five carries for 55 yards. Impressive player by him, and like we said, we talked about the versatility of this offense. He doesn't mind taking it down and running, and he is very confident in the pocket. I mean, uh, very much a, a mature player. You see, they've uh, allowed him to grow some during this offensive time, uh, during the season with Hol Holyfield out, and you can see the results of it. Incredibly impressed with his accuracy and the strength of his arm. He is a Division I quarterback, there's no doubt about it. He's just a junior right now, so he's got another year of high school ball to go, but a true weapon for this Woodward Academy offense that leads by three touchdowns as we start the third quarter, and the ball finally goes out of bounds, but just barely. That was a big chance by Josh Johnson there, waiting for the ball to go out of bounds, and it just barely did. And remember, that's a live ball when the kick goes 10 yards. Watch for that. Now you see the field position that Woodward Academy will get to start this uh, first possession of the second half. So there's Ryan Glover, Elijah Holyfield in the first half, eight carries for 29 yards and one reception for 23. And you take those numbers into consideration and you look and you see that Woodward has a 20 point lead and not a whole lot from Elijah in that first half, not have, statistically at least. Haven't had to, haven't had the pressure. And really that's the type of game of situation I guess Coach Hunt would prefer. So ball at the 35 following the penalty uh -oh. and a flea flicker, Glover going deep for Johnson and broken up at the last moment. That's a big time play by the safety. There is a flag down on the field. The safety, Michael Jenkins came along and broke it up. And we'll check the penalty call here by Bob Preston. Holding. Holding on Sandy Creek. Now watch number three, Josh Johnson. He's your receiver. And let's see if we can find holding somewhere. Well, we don't see it right there. I don't know. The flag was dropped down here, so I think the holding came in the pass route. Maybe right there. Yeah, I don't know if we can back it up all the way, but just as the receiver, Josh Johnson, and Michael Jenkins flashed into the screen, I think there was a holding call right around the 40-yard line, perhaps about 20 yards downfield. Then so that, Then that would make sense. Yeah, first and 10 now from the 45-yard line for Woodward Academy. Keeper by Ryan Glover. Man, and a stiff arm at the end of the play, too. He's that got was, pretty good size. They list him at six foot 180. I, I, he's a nice size quarterback. He's going to grow into that body too. He will. He will. And right now he has a, he has a lot of tools. Uh, he, that was a straight up run on that play. All run out, run all the way. They're not afraid to uh, to call his number and give him an opportunity to run it. We've seen him break off some good runs tonight, and also just the way he commands uh, this whole offensive attack. He does an excellent job. Averages 187 yards of total offense per game. He's already at 230 yards of offense in this game. That's a backwards pass to Holyfield, so that's going to count as a run for Holyfield, who rumbles and across the 40 and nearly broke it. Will Harper kept him from going the distance. How many defenders were there that he go, that he went through that had an opportunity to bring him down, got a hand on him, got an arm on him, but watch. You said the pass is thrown back behind, but watch him pick his way. 
It's one, two, three, four, five, before he comes down. Great extra effort. That's the one thing about the way he runs. He's, uh, when he falls, he's always leaning forward, getting that extra yard. 19-yard pickup. They will count that as a pass. So first and 10 from the 35-yard line. Glover to the air again, and that is caught by Robertson again. Robertson inside the 10 and down to the three. How about Jacob Robertson, 32 yards. This young man has been beset by injuries all year, finally healthy, having a big night. Having a really big night. And watching Finham coming across him right there and still picking up the yards. Looked like he would take it all the way, but brought down inside the five, around the, like around the three. 32-yard pickup for Robertson. That gives him three catches for 95 yards tonight. You can see why he's got 17 offers. First and goal to go. That's Williams in motion behind the line and penalty Encroachment down. on the defense. Encroachment is the call. Encroachment on Sandy Creek, so that's a half a distance to the goal penalty. Wow, Sandy Creek. Been a while since Sandy Creek's been beaten like this. They're about to go down four touchdowns here early in the third quarter. Here's the lineup. Yeah. Yeah. Lined up offside. Plain and simple. So first and goal to go now from the one. Glover slipped trying to make a cutback. Colby Warrior was there cutting back inside and he slips and goes down. They lost yardage on the play. Glover on the keeper and looking to make that cut and just lost his footing. I like Glover, but they had Holyfield as the pitch man. I think I would have pitched it. <laughs> Let him do what he does. Yeah. So now second down and goal. Williams in motion behind the line again. Glover runs to this side, and Glover will not get in. Forte drops him inside the one-yard line. Big tackle by D.J. Forte. He stepped up and made a big hit, number 11. There he is. He's been active. He's been working hard up front. Shakes off to the defender, the blocker, and there he is right there for a nice solo stop. Keeping him out of the end zone. Yeah, what a battle he's got going on right there with Knox Hagen. He beat Hagen on that play and keeps Glover out of the end zone at least for right now. Third down and goal. Unfortunately for Sandy Creek, Forte's helmet popped off, so he's got to come off the field on this critical third down and goal. Johnson in motion behind the line. And Holyfield will not get in. How about that? So Sandy Creek forces a fourth and goal. Watch the Sandy Creek defense. Great effort. Quick shot. Big stop right there. That was Elijah Gilmore who kept Holyfield from getting into the end zone. So now fourth down and goal. And they're going to try a field goal. They're just going to try for the three points right here. Martin Rodriguez, who's six for six on his field goals this season, will attempt one from 19 yards. And it is good. A 19-yard field goal by Martin Rodriguez, but at least a moral victory if not a mathematical victory for Sandy Creek right there. They had it first and goal at the one or two and keep them out of the end zone and force them to settle for three. Got to tip your cap to the, to the Patriots defensive unit. They came out and really stood their ground. Great goal line stand practically inside the one and would deny them the touchdown, made them kick and settle for three. So now 30 to seven. I don't know if I've got Elijah Holyfield, I think I maybe give it to him more than once on first and goal from the one or two. Yep. 
That's what I would do. But Coach Hunt chose differently. He got the three. John the Hunt, story. the uh, Georgia 4A coach of the year a year ago, offensive line coach for Steve Spurrier at the University of Florida, where he played the Washington Redskins and South Carolina. He was an all-SEC guard at Florida back in 1983, playing for Charlie Pell, and he was drafted by the Dallas Cowboys in 1984 and played two years in the NFL. Seven plays, 63 yards, and Sandy Creek keeps them out of the end zone as they settle for three, and it's 30 to seven. Kick is going to be taken at the one by Javon Jackson. Jackson up to the 20 yard line where he gets submarine by Wiggins as we check in with John Nelson. You saw the bio blast there on Coach Hunt. Let's go into the way back machine. And by the way back machine, I mean the way, way back machine. You see, look at the left guard. 1993, Florida, or 83, Florida and Florida State. You're looking at for 68 orange. Clearing holes for Neil Anderson and for the Florida State grads among us. You see a lot of holes being cleared because this was a blowout. Big game for Florida, big game for Florida State. John Hunt from the University of Florida making holes for the Gators. Yeah, he said he's learned a lot being on Coach Spurrier's coaching staff all these years. As Sandy Creek goes back on offense and Walker up top and looking for Banks and nearly caught by yeah. Slaughter who was running behind Banks. And it's going to be second down and 10. Slaughter was almost in the perfect position to make that catch and haul it in. Wasn't meant for him, but. You know, I think it's interesting as we talk about John Hunt a little bit more. He said he learned how to ad lib offensively. And he said Spurrier, that was what he was best at, just ad libbing a play. And he learned a lot of that from him and also earned, or rather, learned a healthy appreciation for the run pass balance. And it's ironic when Hunt got here, he was a triple option coach, but he's adapted his talent. You see how much they've thrown the ball tonight. Great. Second down and 10, Walker going up top again, and Banks runs under it. And Corey Banks has a 78-yard touchdown catch. And there's the big play. It's the thing they wanted to avoid. We talked about, but it looks like there's a penalty flag. Let's see if this is going to come back. Flag back at the 25-yard line. And Ellsworth will downfield on the offense. Wow. And so that one comes off the field. You see Chip Walker is livid. I mean, that's hard to imagine on a pass play like that that there was an ineligible downfield. Now, typically that might happen on a... And now Banks is down on the field needing some assistance to get off the field. Let's see if we can see. There you see number 70 right in the middle. That may be what causes it. He was blocking the defensive end. He just pushed the defensive end back. Yeah, and there's Chandler to it. ESPN four-star, 6'4", 290-pound senior, plays right tackle for Sandy Creek. He's listed, however, as the number 13 offensive guard in the country. He committed to Ole Miss on July 17th, and he will join former Patriots Mike Hilton and Eric Sweeney there in Oxford on Hugh Freeze's staff. They got a little pipeline going on yeah, there yeah. with Ole Miss and Sandy Creek. He's a great athlete. In fact, Chip Walker says he might be the best athlete out of all the great Division I offensive linemen they've had in this program. Walker going back up top again, going for the home run again, and it is dropped by Slaughter. And that was right in the hands. Wow, that is the second time Slaughter, actually really the third time they've gone to Slaughter, and he has not been able to get a handle on a pass. Now, I'm not saying it wasn't a tough catch, but he comes up empty right there. He was open. Walker had time to deliver this one, and uh, in and out of the hands. No, well, he wanted that one. Another opportunity, Sandy Creek. Coach Walker. 
third down and 15. They'll run a draw play, and Hubbard tackled at the 22-yard line by Sandell, and it's going to be fourth down, and they had a 78-yard touchdown pass erased by a penalty, and now they got a punt. Man. That, a drop pass, um, there's just systems and bad things, a series of bad things happening for the Sandy Creek team. And they've created them. Their fault. Weems going to punt from the 10-yard line. Hubbard standing deep for Woodward. Line drive kick. Hubbard has to go back, has it hit in front of him, then takes a Sandy Creek bounce and roll, and finally rolls dead at the 28-yard line. 49-yard kick for Weems, and that's going to knock Woodward back for their second possession of this third quarter but they've got a hefty 23-point lead. You talk about turning the tables. This is a Sandy Creek offense that averages about 39 points per game. They've been held to seven. It's a Sandy Creek defense that gives up six points per game. They've given up 30. Yep, yep. And now Woodward Academy goes back on offense. And Woodward has had their number tonight. Play action to Holyfield, and that's thrown to the tight end. Actually, the fullback, Stephen Whitmer, makes the catch. Second catch of the season for Whitmer, the senior fullback, goes for 11 yards. Once again, we talk about the versatility, the play action. Not one of the wide receivers. How about to the fullback this time? Shows he's got good hands, and he makes a play. One of the things this team has learned to develop once again while Holyfield has been on the men. They've had five different guys catch passes in this game. Six and a half minutes to play in the third quarter. Holyfield. Flag out. Nice open field tackle by Michael Jenkins or Elijah Gilmore. That was eight or nine. His jersey's rolled up on his back there. I can't tell. I think it was Jenkins, the safety. Yeah, it's Jenkins, the, the safety. Offense, 10 yard penalty to the spot of the foul. Repeat the down. So holding penalty against Woodward will back him up 10 yards. And the Sandy Creek defensive unit has been giving an inspired effort. You know, we saw them turn Woodward Academy away inside the two. Woodward 11 and three a year ago. They reached the state semifinals, beat Lithonia, Burke County, and North Oconee in the playoffs, then lost a heartbreaker to St. Pius in the semifinals. It was the deepest playoff run for the story program since winning the 1980 state championship. Glover going for a home run, got Josh Johnson. He's caught it. He's going to go. Josh Johnson, 72 yards. What a play. Made the catch in stride, beat the defender. And once he hauled it in, you knew he was going to take it all the way. Take another look at this one. Technical college systems replay. Fourth touchdown pass of the night for Ryan Glover. Johnson with his first touchdown catch. Robertson's got a couple, and Williams has one. And Rodriguez makes it a 30-point lead. Wow. How about Ryan Glover? How about this Woodward Academy offense? We came here expecting to see a healthy dose of Elijah Holyfield. We've seen an aerial attack by Woodward that's putting a beat down on Sandy Creek in the third quarter. What is by moonlight an empty field is by the magic of electricity, sacred ground. 
As the official energy provider of the GHSA, Georgia's electric membership cooperatives proudly support our student athletes. We are there, illuminating the glory moments fans just have to see. Capturing the hustle, elevating champions, sharing the win. Georgia's EMCs, empowering our youth, lighting the way. Where do you come alive? A stadium, lecture hall, a music hall, church potluck? This year, you have a new spot, walkgeorgia.org, a free website that provides you with all the resources needed to get your heart rate up and body out in your community. Sign up and receive individual or group fitness tracking, fitness demos by certified trainers, recipes, and a guide to resources in your Georgia County, all in one easy-to-use site. When you move more, you live more. Walkgeorgia.org. Welcome back to Woodward Academy. The War Eagles pouring it on. Four TDs through the air, 37-7, halfway through the third quarter. And let's take you through what's going on right now in 6A. Here's how Region 5 looked coming into tonight. Now, updating things, Roswell is rolling. The biggest issues right now, Etowah, Walton, Wheeler, Milton, Cherokee, and Woodstock. You see teams four through seven right now, two and three and two and four. You're looking at four teams heading to one spot. Updating scores out of Cobb County. Walton is beating Milton right now, 28 to nine. That's in the third quarter. So with Walton winning, that could push them to six and one overall. Roswell would go to six and oh. Walton would keep the pace. And this would be probably the end of any kind of playoff hope for Milton as it is four teams for one spot back upstairs. Cole Schreiner set to kick off for Woodward Academy and a 30-point lead for the War Eagles with 5.51 to play in the quarter. Sandy Creek has to score just to avoid a running clock in the fourth quarter. Didn't see this coming. So a lot of things we thought we'd see in this game today. A lot of different things, but not this. Well, I mean, you're talking about a Sandy Creek team that has won. Let me see if I can get this right. I believe 48 of their last 49 region games Yeah. prior to tonight. They've lost only once in the region since 2007 to Woodward last year, and Woodward is laying it on them tonight. Corey Banks with the catch, and this is what makes this such a stunning development. Look at this, Sandy Creek, three-time state champions, won three in four years, 2009, 10, and 13. Actually, 2012, they won the state championship. Record since 2008, 95 and seven, eight region titles, six in a row until last year, seven straight 11-plus win seasons. That's domination. They've just been a dominant force in Georgia high school football. Oh, mm. yeah. K.J. Phillips drops Dre Parson in his tracks. Lost yardage on that. Number five, step right in. He's been active. He's had a really big night in on a lot of stops. He's the first man there on that play. Four tackles for Phillips tonight and a tackle for loss now. Yeah, we're Sandy Creek at one point between 2009 and 2013 won 41 consecutive games, 56 out of 57 and 67 out of 69. Yeah. Double move, Walker hit as he throws and it's intercepted at the 46 yard line. Down the sideline, finally caught from behind the pick by J.R. Pace. And Bryant Walker, who had not thrown an interception the entire season, has thrown two tonight. And he got hit as he threw. Kobe Sandell hit him as he threw. J.R. Pace with his second pick of the season and a 39-yard return. Nice return. And the War Eagles are back in business. Very short field. Wow. I mean, we're going to see guys not on the depth chart here in the fourth quarter. 
Glover back out there. What a night for Glover. 309 yards passing, gives the ball to Holyfield, and Holyfield run out of bounds by Warrior inside the five. And it sounds like you're right, Matt. I mean, in a game like this, you don't expect to be able to go down your depth chart and give you, your other players an opportunity to get a lot of playing time. But Coach Hunt is looking like he will get that opportunity, especially if they cash in with six points here. Well, you got to start thinking about further down the road. The playoffs start in three weeks. The last thing you want to do is, you know, have a valuable player get hurt in what has turned out to be a meaningless fourth quarter coming up. And a timeout has been called by Woodward. That is the first timeout that they have used here in the second half. But you look at Elijah Holyfield, but the real story offensively for Woodward tonight has been their junior quarterback, Ryan Glover. Two touchdown passes to Jacob Robertson. That was the first. That one went to Antone Williams. This one's going to go to Josh Johnson. That was the third. And then number four, Jacob Robertson again. Nice move right there. That was a 37-yard run. There's a lot to like about Ryan Glover. Been offered by Georgia State. But just a junior, he's got a lot more recruiting ahead of him. And he's going to pick up some more offers. Man, that kid can, can really play. He really can. He really can. And uh, in this system, he's been able to, to flourish. You, you mentioned the offensive you know, approach that Coach Hunt had when he arrived here with Academy. And now what he's doing to allow a player like Glover to, to blossom and, and grow, especially with the tools he has around him. He has a lot of talent uh, with the Holyfield having been out for over five weeks. The wide receivers have come on, and now you're getting ready to approach the second season. You know, you're getting ready to go into the postseason. They say that necessity is the mother of invention. Well, they, out of necessity, had to find more weapons on offense when Holyfield went down after the second game of the season. And it's really been a blessing in disguise for Woodward. Ball got batted down at the line of scrimmage by Gary Davis. It's going to bring up third down. Third down and goal from the three-yard line. Sandy Creek defense bowing up again. Can they keep them out of the end zone? Can they turn them away one more time? Are you kidding me? Glover throws, intercepted. Gilmore with the pick. Elijah Gilmore running and finally caught from behind at the 36-yard line by Stephen Elliott. He's at the right place at the right time, and you wonder, you get down there closely, you run the pass play, the ball's deflected. And then the interception. And Gilmore with a nice return. Now, this is an important three minutes and 16 seconds coming up, but Sandy Creek needs to score before the end of this quarter to avoid the running clock. Now, I know it sounds absurd to think that a team that could, could come back from 30 points down, but you've got almost no chance of coming back against a running clock. That's true. So, it, so it you really got to score here to try to get under that 30-point threshold so that you've got a chance to really work your offense still in the fourth quarter as far out in left field as that sounds, that's really what they're facing right here. They need to score before the end of this quarter to have a chance. Didn't get Albeit, much on that first play. Regardless how small it might be. So second down and 10 coming up from the 40 yard line.
Banks makes the catch, got a block out there, and Banks picks up about five or six yards on the play. Kobe Sandell making the tackle. And it's going to bring up third down. Clock approaching two minutes to play in this third quarter. Chip Walker following in the footsteps of his father, Rodney Walker, laid the foundation for this success. But hey, let's take nothing away from Chip. I mean, Chip's been his own man here. Won three state titles with Sandy Creek. Third down, Walker throws. That's a first down to Slaughter. As Slaughter moves the sticks, they get it across midfield to the 44-yard line. Good to see that young man hang on to it. He's, he's been fighting it tonight. You see that expression on his face. He's upset. He's, 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 at, a, he's at a difficult evening. Yeah, 10-yard catch there for Slaughter, his 10th catch of the season. He's had a few get away from him. So Good. first and 10 from the 44. Toss goes to Hubbard, and Hubbard, nowhere to go. Run down by Max Richardson. Richardson with his fifth tackle of the night. He's had a great night, Richardson. The man that Coach Hunt calls the anchor of his defense. And we're inside a minute. Matt, you're saying that Sandy Creek had to get on the board here before the end of this quarter well, to avoid the running clock. Yeah, I think it's important. Complete. And Williams down to the, or pardon me, Jackson down to the 28-yard line. Javon Jackson with the catch. That'll stop the clock with 28 seconds to play in the quarter. Nice pass out here to Jackson, and he's got good moves. Nice step here, loses one defender. Moves the sticks for the first down. Toss goes to Hubbard. Hubbard down to the 22. Costin Barber making the tackle for Woodward Academy on what was the final play of the third quarter. So Sandy Creek will be working against a running clock in the final 12 minutes and down 30 points. Been a stunning night here in College Park, Georgia. Woodward Academy, we knew, we, that we knew they were good, but this good? And they have laid it on Sandy Creek in the first three quarters and take a 37-7 lead on the Patriots to the fourth. Questions. Can't wait until morning. So I'm one of many nurses at Cigna with answers anytime, day or night. I'm Lauren. And I've got your back. Game day brings out the best in all of us. At Regions, every day is game day. Nothing prepares you better for a great career than the technical college system of Georgia. TCSG colleges produce graduates with the knowledge and training today's top employers are looking for. With campuses across Georgia, state-of-the-art facilities, and outstanding instructors with real-world experience, it's the kind of affordable college education that will fast-track you into a rewarding career. We're building a better future for you. Contact the TCSG college in your area today or go to tcsg.edu.
The annual Lights, Lights celebration kicks off the holiday season in historic downtown Moultrie, Thanksgiving night, November 26th at 6 p.m. Brought to you by City of Moultrie Main Street Program and Downtown Moultrie Association. DowntownMoultrie.com Here, beauty is a lot more than skin deep. For more than 100 years, we have focused on creating individual success stories. This is a place where professors are mentors, competition is cheered, collaboration counts, experience is hands-on, and connections are lifelong. VSU, over 100 majors, championship athletics, focused on your success. She's perfectly healthy. Cigna covers preventive care. That's having your back. The state's number one ranked running back, Elijah Holyfield, and his dad, four-time world heavyweight boxing champion of Andrew Holyfield, watching here tonight as the Woodward Academy War Eagles with a 37-7 lead. Don't on Sandy Creek as we head to the fourth quarter. Sure and yeah, that's a very proud pop. Extremely that's proud pop. You know, and John Hunt says that his dad is, you know, he's one of those dads, he, he stands and he cheers and he doesn't say anything whether his son gets five carries or 35 carries a game, but very supportive of his son who is committed to the University of Georgia. Walker going up top and trying to get the ball to slaughter. A little too tall for him. And it's third down and five. And when you think about Elijah Holyfield, obviously his father, and he's seen the work that goes into it, that's one thing that, that, that uh, Coach Hunt will tell you. He, he's good, he's an outstanding player, but he also works. He works so hard. It's one of the things that makes him, uh, makes him so good. There's coach talking to him. Third down and five. Toss goes to Hubbard. Richardson is chasing him. And Hubbard knocks the helmet off Sandell. Sandell. Sandell will have to come off the field for a play. And let's see, did he get the first down? Let's see where they spot it. Close to the sticks over there. It's either a first down or fourth and short. It's going to be fourth down. They didn't get it. So fourth and one coming up for Sandy Creek. Watch for 29, dark jersey. Sandell is going to come up there and help make this play. Fights off the defender. Oh, the helmet comes off. Actually making the play is Richardson. Fourth and one here for Chip Walker's team. Patriots 0 for 1 on fourth downs tonight. Walker throws. Receiver fell down. Bank slipped and fell down. The ball will go over on downs. And so ends that drive and that opportunity for Sandy Creek. It's been that kind of night. So Woodward now just 10 minutes away from moving into a first place tie with Carrollton atop the region five quad A standings. The Carrollton team that's on a roll. They started the season off a of 0 and 3. And I think they've reeled off the, uh, the last uh, five five games in a row. And Woodward will play host to Carrollton in their regular season finale. Sandy Creek will play host to Carrollton next week. So the Trojans got to go on the road to Sandy Creek next week. Not a fun time to go there. No. And then come here the last week of the regular season. Wow. Coach Ed Dudley and the crew. Uh, toss goes to Jalen Polk. First carry of the night for him. Looks like probably seen the last of Elijah Holyfield tonight. And if that's the case, Holyfield will finish with 11 carries for 41 yards and a touchdown and a 23-yard reception. Polk had been the featured back, if you want to call it, on a, a featured back in Holyfield's absence and a, really a, a running back and a player in general that Coach Hunt really likes. He was a really talented player, and, uh, you know, he's done a great bit of growing during this time as well. He's getting a chance to show a little bit of now in the late stages of this game. 
second down and nine. Hand off to Polk again. So third down and seven, and Woodward Academy taking their sweet time getting to the huddle, getting out of the huddle, and coming to the line of scrimmage, working with the running clock in their favor here. And third down and seven. Handoff goes to Polk, and Polk. Shoved out of bounds at the 40-yard line and a first down for Woodward Academy on a 20-yard run. Shows you why the coach really likes him and feels like he's really talented. Here he is with a run and he knows what to do. Great yardage before he's being shoved out of bounds. Coming right into your living room there, folks. 5'10", 160-pound junior running back. Uh, their only real concern with Polk is because of his size, didn't feel like he's the kind of back that... I mean, obviously, he's 45 pounds lighter than Holyfield, not the guy that you're going to be able to give the ball 25, 30 times per game. And now that Holyfield's back, that's not a big issue. No, no. First and 10 for Woodward. They're going to win this game tonight in stunning fashion. Stunning in that they've beaten Sandy Creek as bad as, I don't know when's the last time Sandy Creek was be beaten this badly. You, yeah, you might have to go all the way back to Maybe the early days of the, of the school. Well, probably, you know, I think, you know, they, they won their first state championship in 2009. I think they were 11 and 1 Holding in 2008. Offense. Maybe back to 2007, maybe 2006. Uh, one of the first three seasons for uh, Chip Walker might have had a loss like this somewhere along the line. They've never been, you know, they've always been a good program. Right. Then they became a great program. Then they became one of the best in the state, state championship type program. So. You'd have to get into the Georgia High School Football Historians Association website to go back and find the last time they had a loss like this. And coach still looking over some things. And John Nelson, our resident historian, is uh, trying to find out the last time Sandy Creek had a loss like this. Keeper Glover. And Glover picks up. About 10 yards plus on the play up to the 42, close to the original line of scrimmage. And so John Nelson has been pouring through the record books. What you find, Nelly? We go back to the year 2006, mm -hmm. October 6, 2006, in a game at Cartersville, a 31 to nothing loss yep. when Chip Walker was 7 and 4. They started out of the blocks 3 and 0, lost 2 to Villarica and to Cartersville. That 31 nothing win, that 31 nothing win for Cartersville. Then they win four out of their last six to finish seven and four. So 10, six, oh, six, the answer to your question. Yeah, I knew it had to be a long time back to maybe the first seasons that Chip was the head coach, that they had a loss like this. Been a tough night for this Sandy Creek defense that came into the game number one scoring defense in the country there's will harper six foot 190 pound senior three-star safety playing linebacker for sandy creek basically playing the same position here at sandy creek that he'll play at syracuse he's committed to the orangeman he'll be an early enrollee team leading 38 tackles on the season but what they really like about him and the other linebacker trap is you know they're basically safeties playing linebacker positions against these spread offenses and Woodward just gashing Sandy Creek now the writing on the wall for the fighting Patriots and they've lost a lot of their fight Polk with another nifty run showing you why he's very popular with his coach and, and very capable as you said not a guy that you would want to give as many carries as you would to Elijah Holyfield but here he is making the most of his opportunities and showing you in Holyfield's absence He's been able to keep this offense moving and giving his contribution to it. 
Yeah, four carries for 31 yards for Polk on this drive alone. Looking at that Sandy Creek team, not going to be a good week at practice next week, but watch out, Carrollson. <laughs> it's Friday night. So first and 10, handoff goes to Polk again, and he's dropped by Taylor Hodge. Woodward with two state titles in their history, all of them under Hall of Fame coach Graham Hickson. In 1980, they beat Marist 14 to 10 to win the AAA championship. In 1970, they beat Old Dykes High School 20 to 14 to win the AA championship. Played for it again in 76, lost to Avondale ah. 20 to 19. State semifinalists last year it was their first region championship in 17 years. And Graham Hickson, who I mentioned, the uh, legendary coach here in College Park at Woodward Academy. Hickson coached here for 25 years, won 210 games, and all three state championship appearances came under him. But it's been a while. And in, in fact, it, it had been the, the, the semifinal run last year, Sam, was the deepest run they had made since winning the state title in 1980. And, uh, it was interesting because it kind of connected the new Woodward Academy, the new ball players, and even the new head coach John Hunt with the, you know, with the history of this program. And and Coach Hunt said it was very interesting to see a lot of the old Woodward Academy alumni come back and support the team, and yeah. and the players were really surprised by it. They were really surprised by the support they were getting from people that you know they're not physically connected to the school anymore, but came back to support their alma mater as they made their big playoff run. They got a chance to get to the dome. They do. They do. They've shown us tonight. I mean, this is a solid team all the way around. They've got a smothering defense, and they've got a high power and versatile offense. And we didn't really see Elijah Holyfield tonight. Not the real deal. Holyfield. The, real, the real deal? <laughs> we got half the deal. Tonight. <laughs> they didn't need any more than they they only needed about 10 percent of the deal yep, tonight. that's all they needed tonight uh, but you know going forward it allows you know coach hunt to gradually bring him it's probably you know in a, a best case scenario is probably what coach hunt was hoping to get him in mm -hmm. get him some reps get him some opportunities but not to the point where they had to run him uh, uh, an awful lot in this game and so he had a chance to do it to see how he is to see where he is and uh you know, also, we heard this week when he came back out to practice, a little out of condition because he hadn't been running that very much. Uh, so it's, it works out very well, and then he shows off some of the other weaponry that they have on offense. So a timeout with 127 to play. Woodward on top, 37 to 7. Garner from Forest Park High School sparked an interest in me to really push me in education, uh, to be more than just a student athlete. You know, each and every day she challenged me to be a leader, a role model, and somebody positive in our community. I can never uh, thank her enough for, for, for what all she's done for me. And there are teachers just like Miss Garner all over the state of Georgia today. You exercise, you choose the salad, occasionally, but staying well, physically, financially, emotionally, is hard on your own. So Cigna's got your back and your knees 24 seven. Cigna's there to answer your questions. Or when you need some coaching, in sickness and in health, Cigna's there, helping you to get well and stay well. That's having a partner who's with you all the way, Cigna. 109 to play. Woodward getting ready to put this one in the history books, improved to 8 and 0 on the season and 3 and 0 and move into a tie with Carrollton atop the region standings. Big night for Woodward Academy. This will make it in all likelihood and of course the region race isn't decided. It become very hard for Sandy Creek to still win this thing. It, mathematically could still happen, but it'll be two years in a row that Sandy Creek has been denied the region championship by Woodward. Looks like it's going to be between Woodward and Carrollton. High snap, and Rodriguez punts it away. Javon Jackson takes it at the 14 and gets dropped right away by Sultan Shabazz. 
And Sandy Creek is 14. gonna go. You see the holding call against Woodward Academy. Elijah's mom watching. War Eagles, 30-point win over Sandy Creek tonight. And, of course, we're going to talk about Elijah. He's a four-star running back, the highest-rated running back in the state of Georgia and committed to the Bulldogs. But the real story for me tonight, Ryan Glover, yes. the quarterback, yes. and the Woodward defense. The Woodward defense. Um, you know, the play we saw from that defensive unit, where Mac Richardson and what he was doing around the middle and that defensive line, uh, just what they were able to do, the tackles for, for loss, um, you know, stopping a lot of uh, a lot of progress, some sacks, uh, just really active on the defensive front. Those are the things I saw. Costume Barber, and uh, you know, they were really, really active. Knox Hagen, also one that was active. Terry Myrick, the bandit. Uh, those guys were really. Um, Really making an impact in the game today. Saw Ryan Glover there. Repeat first down. And there's Max Richardson. Committed to Boston College, but before he heads up to Chestnut Hill, he's got a senior season to complete here at Woodward Academy. And indeed, the best could be yet to come for this team. Yeah, there's no doubt. Very impressed with what John Hunt has done with this program. They'll now be 27 and seven over the last two plus seasons. That's green on the run for Sandy Creek. And his team in the championship race along with Cartersville and Buford. Yeah. Mary Persons, Bainbridge. Sandy Creek not out of it. I. I've seen teams lose by 30 points during the regular season and come back and beat the same team for the state championship. Tucker did that several years ago, got killed by Maris during the regular season, came back and beat him in the Georgia Dome for the state title. Yeah. So Sandy Creek not out of it. It's been a bad night for the Fighting Patriots as it mercifully comes to an end for Chip Walker and his team. Their worst loss since the 2006 season. And it is Woodward that hands it to them as the War Eagles thump and thrash and basically beat down the Patriots 37 to 7. And I got to say it once again, Matt, this is not what we expected to see tonight, but just an impressive showing by Woodward Academy in every phase of, of this game tonight, offensively, defensively. And we got to see Elijah Holyfield get back on the field, uh, contribute. And, um, you know, he's shaking off a little rust, obviously, from not being uh, inactive and in, active and in playing over the past five weeks. Uh, but we see enough from this team to figure with him back in the mix, the balance on this offense going forward uh, is just going to be something to watch going into the postseason. This might be the best team that Woodward Academy has had in 35 years since they last won a state championship tonight. They announced to the state that they are state championship contenders with an impressive 37 to seven victory over Sandy Creek. Next week, we're at Decula. Falcons playing host to Archer. We'll talk to you then. And now for Sam Cren Crenshaw and Matt Stewart, down to John Nelson on the field. Thank you very much, Matt, here with the coach. I, some coaches are into statement games, some coaches aren't. What's the statement from tonight if you're not a statement coach and this isn't a statement game? Well, obviously, going into this thing, that Sandy Creek team is a good, a very good team. And um, there was a challenge for us. And, and I was really kind of excited for our guys. Our approach all week was wonderful. They were, they were attentive, they were coachable, they hustled. And we stressed all week about executing, and which we hadn't always done. We've been hit or miss and in spots. We've been good in spots. We looked horrible. And I just stressed, guys, just execute, execute, execute. And, uh, and we did that today. And so I'm real proud of my guys back there. I mean, they earned every bit of it. You know, so I'm real excited. So when you look at that final score over my right shoulder, how much of a surprise is that to you? 
Well, be quite honest with that seven up there is not a surprise. Our defense has been playing fantastic all year. I mean, that was very characteristic. I'm kind of disappointed they missed that tackle and they even given that seven up, be honest with you. 37, I didn't think I was going to get. You know, sitting here now, I'm kind of mad because we gave two touchdowns away. The 14 points we left out there. But, um, but still, you know, overall, I always felt we were capable to, to play this well. You know, we just hadn't done it this year. And, and I got to tip my hat to the guys behind me and all the coaches behind me. I did a fantastic job, and, and they earned this thing. So how, so how close to a complete game was this for you, do you think? You know what? Pretty darn close. It really was. I, I mean, as coaches, you always strive for you know that perfect game, complete game, and you never get it, but you always strive for it. This was pretty darn close. You know, it really was. And that, and that is a quality opponent right over there, class act. And uh, they've been champs for a long time. And um, and to have it, you know, to, for us to play that well against that opponent, uh, you know, I'm real proud of our guys. All right, congratulations. Go celebrate. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you. We'll do. That's the coach. We'll have folks coming up in a sec. The postgame show starts right now. Thank you, John Nelson. Hi again, everybody, and welcome to the GPB postgame show on Football Fridays in Georgia. I'm Mark Harmon, and I tell you, today was a statement game by Woodward Academy. I think you're starting to intimidate teams because, you know, <laughs> this is certainly not what we thought was going to happen. I think you might have intimidated Sandy Creek a little bit. They thought you were going to blow them out or something. I don't know. I don't I'm going to blame it on you, but you've got some highlights to get to, so let's see what you got on the highlight board. <laughs> All right, well, let's go ahead and check out the highlights because Woodward Academy went right to work first quarter and they give it to number 13. Everybody wondered how Elijah Holyfield would play tonight. He played just fine. 13 yards for number 13. That score made it 14 to nothing as Woodward Academy jumped out on top. Second quarter now. It's Ryan Glover to Antone Williams, number one with the quick six. That made it 20 to nothing. Woodward Academy on top. Still in the second. Marvin Hubbard, the big play for Sandy Creek. He breaks two or three tackles and breaks down the skyline. Hall and buggy, 81 yards for the Sandy Creek touchdown. That cut the lead to 20 to 7. But late in the fourth quarter, second quarter, Ryan Glover to Jacob Robertson. He goes up top right into your living room. Great camera work there. 27-7 at the half in the third quarter. It would be Ryan Glover connecting with Josh Johnson. This one, 72 yards is number three. Streaks into the end zone. That made the final 37-7, and that was your final score as Woodward Academy raises its record to 8-0 on the season. Sandy Creek falls to 6-2. Woodward Academy taking control of the region right now with that victory. Well, let's check in with John Nelson. He's got a star player or two, I'm sure, standing alongside. John? We're kind of eavesdropping. I feel like I'm at the library for a moment. Coach Hunt wrapping things up with the team huddle. We're going to grab Ryan Glover here as soon as the pile is done. Ryan, Ryan, if I could please. Yes, sir. And I just got served on live television. If you would, here's your terrible towel. Thank you so much. Enjoy. Sir. There you go. Thank you, sir. Go through this night for me, and what did it mean to this program to make a statement like this? Uh, crazy night, sir. Crazy night. Uh, I don't think Wilder's been a no in about 30 years. It's, it's something crazy, but uh, we just showed out. We came ready to play. So, so what was the week of prep like knowing that this was going to be one of those games that was going to make you a one or a two down the line? Well, uh, I will say this week I probably, I would probably have like five film sessions, like a film every single day during school. I mean, it's just been constant day in and day out working and just preparing for these guys. So when you look at that scoreboard and you're a plus 30, okay. how much of a surprise is that to you considering all the prep that went into this week? Uh, it's not so much a surprise. I mean, uh, we prepared for this moment, and I, I kind of knew. I, I didn't know, but you know what I'm saying? It's not a surprise because we prepped for this, sir. Two more games left, regular season. Two more. And I know that you're looking for another five after that. Yes, sir. To get to that point past where you were last year, to get to a game 15, to win yes, a game 15, what do you think you need to do between now and then? Uh, just get better every week. If everyone gets better every week, then you know what I'm saying? There's no stopping us, you know? So just everybody get better and work hard and practice. Ryan G, you had a, a decent night, 10 of 15 for three spins. Thanks for hanging out with us tonight. No problem. Thank you, sir. Thank you. How many sirs was that, Jackie? About 38 in about a, a span of about two minutes? That's polite. That's called Southern goodness. That's what that is. I appreciate that. <laughs> Back <laughs> you to you. Be we'll have the post-game show and stuff in a sec. <laughs> 
All right, thanks, John. Guys, don't forget to interact with us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat. We are on all platforms at GPB Sports, and we had a contest going all night long called Caption This Photo. This is Javon Jackson, quarterback for Sandy Creek, and we were looking for the best captions, and I think we may have found it here. This is from 1119, says, Once a patriot, always a patriot. That's pretty good. All right. And this is Kalia. She says, When you love your school and your little sister, His, uh, this is the little sister, god sister of Javon Jackson. So that one's not bad. When you love your school and your little sister, we'll go with it. But this one, I think, takes the cake. Look, Ma, two hands. That for sure is worthy of a caption this. That's a really good caption. We're going to give it to Jay Jackson 24 Guys, don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You can get some cool GPB swag and keep up with all of the behind-the-scenes actions that happens right here on game day. Now it's time for the GPB play of the game, and this one comes in the very first play of the game about one minute 11 seconds into it very first play of the game a 40-yard touchdown pass to, from Ryan Glover to number 18 Jacob Robertson came really early here in the game kind of set the tone here for Woodward he looks looks throws and away he sails right into the end zone nobody on him the War Eagles would strike first and run away with it for the rest of the night as you saw here live on GPB it's hard to believe that there's just two weeks left of the regular season, and then we're into the playoffs. I don't know where the regular season has gone, but it's time to check this week's score on our GMC score, Georgia GMC scoreboard. And right off the top, Grayson runs its record to 8 0, knocking off Tequila. 40 to nothing, your final score. Roswell, no trouble with Woodstock, 69 to 7. Likewise, Archer, 42 to 6 over Central Gwinnett. Now, Mill Creek leads Collins Hill, 28 to 17, that game in the third quarter. McEacher, no trouble tonight with Kennesaw Mountain, 35 to nothing in the fourth quarter. Peachtree Ridge leading over an undefeated Norcross team, 24 to nothing in the fourth quarter. Remember, Peachtree Ridge beat McEachern earlier this year. It is Walton over Milton, 28 to six, and a big rivalry game there in the third. Northside Warner Robins remains unbeaten. They're the top-ranked team in Class 5A. They beat Grovetown, 28 to seven. Cartersville, top-ranked in 4A, beat Southeast Whitfield, 49 to three. And Calhoun, top-ranked in 3A, and they show you why, beating Murray County tonight, 70. To 13. So not a whole lot of close games tonight around the state, but a lot of points, a lot of touchdowns scored. That's right, and it's been an action-packed evening, so we want you to kick back, relax, stay a while. It's time for a Georgia Traveler pit stop at Serenby Farms, not too far from here. Here's Fulton County. That's right, the same Fulton County as this, However, here you may find just a little more of this and a little less of this. Enter Chattahoochee Hill Country in a thriving, environmentally friendly community known as Serenby. Steve Nigren may be a familiar name to longtime Atlantans. He was the founder of the Peasant Restaurants, and his wife, Marie, is the daughter of Margaret Lupo, who opened the popular Midtown restaurant, Mary Max Tea Room, back in 1945. Steve and Marie still operate in the hospitality business, but in an entirely different variety. We now have 65,000 acres that's known as the Chattahoochee Hill Country. That's half the size of the inside of the perimeter of Atlanta, to give you some perspective. So this is a large mass right here on the edge of Atlanta that's still totally green. Serenby has gone through development, but the Nigrans keep a close eye. 30% is allotted for development, leaving 70% to Mother Nature. However, within that 30%, you will find great restaurants, two of which are The Hill and The Blue-Eyed Daisy. And keep an eye out, because a few of the friendly neighbors may be hanging out in hopes of leftovers. The Inn also boasts one of Metro Atlanta's most highly acclaimed dining destinations, an organic farm-to-table restaurant known as The Farmhouse always a southern experience of some sort. We like to say, uh, imagine southern food that you would order a good bottle of wine with is a good way to, to think about it. Uh, in a historic old farmhouse. This is where a lot of the food for the restaurant comes from. Well, some of it, now that the restaurant has become so popular, 
We get a lot of our vegetables from Saren Bee Farms, which is a large organic farm that are back up in the community. Saren Bee Farms grows food for all three restaurants in town and helps supply a nice organic selection for the farmer's market. Walk the trails of Chattahoochee Hill Country, stroll the gardens, and maybe visit some of the friendly farm animals. Saren Bee is a gift to Metro Atlanta, cleaning the air and sequentially cleansing the palate. Check out more Georgia Traveler Thursdays on GPB. I can agree with that. I've actually been to the Hill restaurant. I think it's in Tyrone and also Mary Max. I mean, who hasn't been to Mary Max? Right. I could use a little serenity at Saren be <laughs> driving down here today and all that traffic to get here. I could use a little Just peace and quiet. Just seeing shots of the traffic brought back awful flashbacks <laughs> just <laughs> earlier today. Right. Yeah. Well, let's check in with John Nelson now. He's got some other scores from around the state. John? All right. I think we are officially going to kick it. Hit those magic words and let you know what's going on around the state. We're going to go to Region 85A and get you caught up on the Winder Barrow Clark Central game. Winder Barrow right now coming into the game is in that gaggle of teams where you've got four teams going after two spots. Right now it's 21-17. Chapman finding Ryan Evans for the 11-yard score. They're under four minutes to go in regulation right now, and this game's been a back-and-forth game. Clark had a 17-14 lead at the 7-14 mark, so now Winder Barrow, which has been a fourth-quarter team for a lot of the year, they're showing again, once again, that they are a fourth quarter squad. Coming in right now, Winder Barrow was four and two, four and three in the region, so they're hanging on to that four spot. Clark Central needs the win to get back into that pack to chase the four spot. So right now, that's your score, and that's your update out of Region 8-5A. Guys, we'll have a lot more stuff going on around the state. 6A, a lot of action going on in single A. There are teams making statements tonight. We'll come back in just a bit, and we'll let you know what else is going on around the state as we continue to kick it back to you you know it doesn't get any up more up to date than that i mean that's I right know. to the nanosecond thankfully i mean we have john nelson every day in our <laughs> office so we can just go to him whenever we want <laughs> absolutely well coming up on our gpb football fridays in georgia post game show we'll have more scores from around the state i'm sure john will pop in plus we'll check in with you on social media we'll have the always jovial phil proctor rejoining us for a talk more traveler fun so we have that to look forward to in the georgia football fridays in Georgia post game show, it all continues when we return after this. Football Fridays in Georgia on GPB is made possible in part by Regions Bank. It's time to expect more. Georgia's Electric Membership Corporation, lighting the way. Technical College System of Georgia, learn more, earn more. Cigna together all the way and viewers like you thank you At the heart of our community are the businesses that don't skip a beat. Georgia's electric membership cooperatives stand behind local commerce. Whether keeping farms running or shining a light on new ventures, we bring business, large and small, to our communities. Creating jobs, driving development, supporting dreams. Georgia's EMCs, powering our businesses, lighting the way. As a strong, stable bank, Regions is always looking for opportunities to boost the vitality of our communities. In addition to offering financial solutions for our customers, we are committed to supporting local initiatives and organizations that help our neighborhoods thrive. Regions is proud to be a partner with GPB in building a better Georgia. The annual Lights, Lights celebration kicks off the holiday season in historic downtown Moultrie, Thanksgiving night, November 26th at 6 p.m. Brought to you by City of Moultrie Main Street Program and Downtown Moultrie Association. DowntownMoultrie.com 
Welcome back to the GPB Post Game Show. We are live at Woodward Academy, live at Colquitt Stadium, live where the War Eagles took on and took out the Fighting Patriots of Sandy Creek by a score of 37 to 7. And here are some things you don't want to miss on social media, on Twitter. Edie Patek says, this is Ryan Glover here, a stu superstar from day one. Photos like this are great, especially for Throwback Thursday, Flashback Friday, whatever you want to do. Interact with us on social media at GPB Sports. Then we also have Linda Compton chiming in, says, I'm Coach Vandegraaff, defensive coordinator at Woodward's mother, watching the game from Knoxville, Tennessee, says, go War Eagles. Yes, they did. They went tonight, that's for sure. Then we have a little baby chiming in. This is from Diane Clinton. This happens to be my cousin's baby. It says, hi, Aunt Jackie. I'm watching. Love, Peyton Sanderson. He's pretty cute. I will say that. We got we to give him some love. All right, don't forget to find us on Facebook and Twitter at GPB Sports, where you can chime in on the interaction and hang out with us here at the football game. You can stream the game live from our GPB Sports app. It's completely free, and it gives you all of the up-to-date scores from around the state of Georgia. If you consider yourself a high school football fan in the state of Georgia, it's for you. Also, find us on Snapchat where you can see the behind the scenes action taking place right here on set and at the game. So there you have it. That's the social media segment for now. Mark, we'll send it back over to you. All right, thanks very much. We now welcome in Phil Proctor from our Georgia Traveler family. And you know, you played at South Carolina. Coach Hunt coached at South Carolina. Big connection. Big connection there. And you know, I'm really excited about that. That's right. Now, usually you're eating a bunch of stuff when you're out on Georgia Traveler, but today <laughs> you try to cook and whip and bake and some stuff up. Well, you know, my grandmother always said, if you're going to eat like I like to eat, you better learn how to cook. So what do you think happened when I went over to La Cordon Bleu? Check it out. Yum, yum. <laughs> what happens when you take these big hands and these little guys right here and put them together? We're here at La Cordon Bleu to find out. Well, uh, Le Cordon Bleu, uh, obviously we've been around uh, since 1895. It was founded in, in Paris, France. And we have 16 Le Cordon Bleu schools in the United States. Uh, we've been here 10 years in Atlanta, uh, very proud of that. We have programs for both the professional and the enthusiast. Yeah, the weekend classes is our Blue Ribbon Kitchen classes. And we do a wide variety of things from introductory, basic, fundamental cooking skills. There's a wide variety of classes there, um, surely, you know, from the basic level Level, even up to advanced. And today, I'm learning how to make a delectable dessert known as Petit Four. I joined Chef Kyle Reynolds pastry class to make these tiny, tasty treats. So first off, everyone, you have frangipan in front of you. This is an almond cake, and we're going to layer it to make Petit Fours. To start, Chef instructs us to grab a knife and run the blade around the edges of the cake to separate it from the pan. We cut the cake in thirds, grab some strawberry jam, and spread it on two of the layers. How come all my classmates seem to have an idea what they're doing and I'm still working? <laughs> <laughs> we stack our cakes and prepare to cover them. So next, we need to roll out some marzipan to put on top. So uh, let's put our cakes on the rack over here, just to get them out of our way. Yeah. Right now my dough is, well my marzipan is a circle, and my cake is what shape? Rectangle. rectangle, right? So we want this to be a rectangle, so. Yeah, I noticed mine's is not exactly rectangle, but you know, where I grew up, you know, we didn't have regular rectangles. Right. Yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> Just go with it, okay? <laughs> so uh, let's go ahead and grab our cakes and bring them over to our station. Yeah, just me, see? <laughs> Always had a problem with thirds, and you can see mine's completely off. The next dilemma that we've got is, how do you get this onto the cake? So I'm gonna put the rolling pin on top of the dough, lift up that leading edge, and then just start to roll it up in the rolling pin. And then you're just gonna let the rolling pin roll it right over the top and any excess marzipan, just trim flush with the edges of the cake. Obviously, my classmates are a little more advanced than I am. Next, we need to cut the cake. 
I typically use a ruler for this, and I like to mark it out at three quarters of an inch. Why don't you go ahead and get started? Oh, that's right, because you know it's going to take a minute. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> we cut the cake into petite, bite-sized pieces and began icing and designing. Bring it close to the bowl so that you're not dripping all over the place. There we go. I'm probably going to do that anyway. <laughs> and so I'm getting the hang of it. That one's covered. Almost. You know, practice makes perfect. It's all right to, to fail. You can learn from failure. Notice I missed the whole thing when you said that. <laughs> The masterpiece preparation continues as Chef Kyle heats and mixes some chocolate icing for us to use for decorating. That's a pretty pipeable consistency. Grab your paper bag, fill it up about halfway. And the next thing is just kind of figure out what you want to do for the decoration on the top. And let's try to practice some of the piping. I have no idea what it is, but I like it. So after mastering the art of making petit fours, I earned the coveted crown. On behalf of La Cordon Blue Atlanta, our president, Glenn Mack, our whole staff, we now honor you with the toque. You have graduated to chef. Wear it well. Thank you, thank you. Oh, I couldn't have done it without my classmates. This is so wonderful. You know, usually oh, I complain. <laughs> I usually complain when you don't bring back anything from all these fabulous right, places right. you go. But I, I'm not going to complain. Oh, come tonight. on, Mark. I, I had look. I was working that thing, man. I mean, I had all kind of angles going, and I mean, you guys at home, y'all saw what was going on. I know you wanted to run out and probably grab some of the pedophiles I put together. Right. It seemed very meticulous. It was. Like, it was very. I mean, when he brought the ruler out, I was like, yeah, I couldn't do that. Well, see, I'd those guys, are, the, all the, the the students in the class, they were very good, and I mean, they actually had it down uh, to the point where it's like half an inch a third of an inch and me I was just going hey if I could just cut this up I can make something happen so but I was excited that's the first time I ever had to do something like that it was fun how many did you get to take home or eat uh, why, why, why? <laughs> <laughs> about seven okay that's not bad they're little they're tiny you can get away yeah. with that you're not counting calories or anything it's not like it matters Okay, well, all I can tell you is I had a ball doing it, and if I get a chance to do it again, I'm going to actually make you guys something. I'm going to bring you know, it up. Really? If you have a chance to do that again, you know, bring them to her. Mark, <laughs> you always complaining about we don't bring you nothing, so I'm going to hook you up this time, baby. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. It's all right. It's good. All right. Next time, we plan on it. I believe John Nelson is standing by. John, what do you have for us? All right, we have one of the cooler events of the evening, round number one. We'll have another one coming up in the last 10 minutes of the show. We're going to take you to Kell in North Atlanta and Julian Chang, a 52-yard field goal for the Kell Longhorns in their win tonight against North Atlanta. So there you go, 52 yards, Julian Chang. He gets the long-distance field goal and Derek Cook and their program right up there at Kell. Big win tonight against North Atlanta. Thank you very much, Daryl. Now let's talk about how things are going in a couple of the regions. Let's go to Region 46A and show you how things were at the beginning of the evening and give you an update as to how things are now. You see McEachern, Hillgrove, North Cobb, Harrison, North Paulding, Kennesaw Mountain, and Marietta. McEachern, no problems with Kennesaw Mountain, so they are now 4-0, 7-1 overall. Hillgrove, no problems with Harrison, so they stay in step. They're 4-1. North Cobb didn't play, so they're still 3-1 in third place so Harrison North Pauling and Kennesaw Mountain right now they are all fighting for that fourth playoff spot but it's looking like it's going to be for those first three McEachern number one North Cobb probably number two because they had rest this week Hillgrove number three so that means that Hillgrove if they're going to make a run in the 6A playoffs that they're going to have to do it on the road North Cobb looks like they might be getting a home game if they went out over the next two weeks that's it for this particular update when we send it back over to your way and we'll have more in just a bit all right, John, thanks very much. Coming up still later on the GPB post-game show on Football Fridays in Georgia, we'll have more scores and more finals for you. Phil Proctor will join us again for more Georgia Traveler fun, all of that and more as we continue our coverage here on the GPB Football Fridays post-game show. Stay with us. Don't go anywhere. I wasn't very interested in what was going on in the classroom. I even considered dropping out. Did you know that high school dropouts commit about 75% of crimes? And they make a quarter of a million dollars less 
than graduates in the lifetime? If you're struggling, find someone to talk to. That's what I did. And I graduated high school. And that is a decision that I will never regret. Next time on I'll Have What Phil's Having. Whoa, this is not my life. This is too cool for me. I'm going to Barcelona. Not only does this city never sleep, it really knows how to eat. It's a search for the best tapas. That's one of the most delicious things I ever ate in my life. And one of nature's greatest gifts, jamón. They don't even see that I'm eating half of it. All this and more on the next I'll Have What Phil's Having. Monday at 10 on GPB. Stay connected to your team like never before with the GPB Sports Football app. Get the latest news. Watch featured games live wherever you Sammy are. Find, the look at that, look at that. find relevant info on schools and take interactive 3D tours of stadiums around the state. Tweet game highlights from the stands and get up to the minute scores all Friday night. The gridiron has gone digital. Download the free GPB Sports Football app from the iTunes App Store now. Welcome back to the GPB post game show coming to you live from Woodward Academy High School in College Park, Georgia, where the War Eagles took on the Fighting Patriots of Sandy Creek, winning at 37 to 7. And we're right here at Colquitt Stadium. That's right. Colquitt. Colquitt. Not to be confused with Colquitt. <laughs> Phil, a few weeks ago, you went surfing. That was truly amazing, I got to say. But sources are telling me that your pal David Zelski went paddleboarding, standing up. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> Go back to the surfing comment now. <laughs> I mean, I was pretty good, right? I, hey, I said it. Okay. I said it was truly an amazing sight. Yeah, it was amazing to get all this body up on that board. <laughs> but I tell you what, Z loves going out. That's what I call Zelski. He loves going out and doing a lot of the water sports and everything. And he had a chance to do paddleboard. And I'm going to tell you, the guy's much better than me. I mean, check it out. Much better than me. Much better. Learning to walk, learning to ride a bike, and of course, learning to paddleboard. Times are changing and so are the adventures. John and Tara are a paddleboarding, kayaking, business operating couple who have You could drive them in the blue ocean, but you gotta get away to where the boat leaves from. They also offer excursions out of Jekyll Island, just one barrier island south. You can opt for a smooth journey through the estuaries or take it out to sea where you have to pay attention to the waves. Much like a boat in the open sea, you want to hit them head on. If you capsize, you can get right back up. But we only have about 10% of our people ever fall in, so. Do you hear that? 10% uh, fall in their first yes. time. 10%. I better not fall. We'll keep you okay. in that 90%. Thank you. Right. We don't give people too much information. Um, you can give somebody a 45 minute lesson, but you know, a lot of times that's going in one ear and out the other, where they're just looking to get on the water and have fun. So it's yeah. just giving people the right amount of make information to make them successful. We've seen a dolphin. Jumping fish, we were swarmed by birds. We may have seen a manatee. And once you are comfortable with your balance, it's time to get a little zen. Being one of the least flexible people on earth, I figured a little yoga lesson from Tara could do some good. Get 
it's really very similar to a practice in a studio. You're just taking your mat out on the water. And you've got a little added balance in there, but just the serene setting. And after you're finished, just to lay on the board and let your hands hit the water is just one of the most relaxing things that I've ever found. Good. Try that. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yoga master. And here's the coolest part of all. Once the sun sets, SSI SUP takes the experience to a whole new level. Stand up, glide, and glow. Oh, there we go. Now the party starts. We've seen rays pass through and jellyfish? some jellyfish. Big fish underneath. Shark, ray. Sharks are not a problem, even at night, the night paddle boarding. Yeah, so that is our number, <laughs> that's yeah. our number one question is, uh, if I go out on the boards at night, uh -huh. are sharks gonna be attracted to the boards? Yeah. But they're, they're night hunters, so they kind of steer away from the, the light. They can't really differentiate between sunlight and artificial light. That makes so sense. They may be on, on the edges somewhere that you, we won't ever see. These lit up paddle boards are the safest place to be at night yeah. when it comes yeah, to sharks. Yeah, actually repels <laughs> them. There is the turquoise setting, which is my personal favorite, uh -huh. and it makes the water look like you're in the Caribbean. That popularity of this sport, you know, years mm -hmm. ago you didn't see it anywhere. Now I see it on ponds in the Atlanta area, on little rivers, streams. I, I see it all around. You can and put a board on any body of water and yeah. it floats. All you need is about nine or 10 inches of water. So brave the waves, enter the zen, and glide in style. SSI SUP is the latest and one of the greatest ways to really absorb Georgia's beautiful coast. So take it all in, and you most likely won't fall in. Uh -huh. You guys get to do some pretty cool <laughs> yeah. stuff there on Georgia Traveler. Wait, just a minute. I'm feeling my zen. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I like that she said girls were a little bit better at it. I mean, essentially, that's what she said. Yeah, but I know. But I didn't like the part about the sharks. I'm not sold on the explanation for the sharks not really being around, kind of being on the edges. Okay. That, but that makes me a little nervous still. But did you not think the lights under the bottom were the coolest thing? Those were really cool. I okay. know. So, I want to do it, but not at feeding time for the sharks. <laughs> so you just couldn't <laughs> avoid the sharks and just really check out the light? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe see? maybe one day. We'll JB, see. JB, we got to do better than that. <laughs> I know. Right, we'll try. I'm going to work with JB. We're going to get this right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. John Nelson is standing by. He's got an update for us in high school football. John, what you got? I have <laughs> the big board. This is the quad A bracket that the folks will be paying attention to the 32 teams that want to make it to the Georgia Dome for the final in Quad A. Now, the way that things started at the beginning of the evening, let's show you the region standings from tonight coming in. Carrollton won last night. They beat Troop, so Carrollton had the lead at 3-0 and 5-3. And then you have Woodward Academy, Sandy Creek with the results from tonight. Whitewater, Fayette County, and Troop. Troop lost to Carrollton. So, Here's how the quad A bracket breaks out and how important it is for you to be the one or the two seed as we come out here to the big board. And I'll show you the paths that the one and the two seeds have to take. So Carrollton, they're in a bit of a bind because they have to play Woodward Academy and Sandy Creek for their last two games. So if everything goes the way that we anticipate, the region five, number one, top seed is right here. The way that their path goes, they would end up with North, North Hall, North Oconee up in here. Then down in this bracket, it would be Mary Persons and Marist. So the path would be easier, and there's the possibility of a couple of home games if you win the region title. So let's just say for the sake of playing things through with the win tonight, Woodward Academy, if they're the one, they would end up here, Region 5, Team number 1. They would have Mary Persons and or Marist here to get to the semifinals. Down in here, it's probably going to end up being Buford. Everyone's going to be looking at Buford in this region, so you would probably have Woodward Academy and Buford playing through if you played favorites all the way through. Now, let's go to the flip side. Five number two is all the way up here in this corner, and the way that it would play out for the five two, it's a hard road because you've got the possibility of a road trip to Bainbridge. You've got a game against St. Pius and Cartersville, would be the team that everyone's going to be looking at low right. So the difference between being the one seed and the two seed out of Region 5 is home games. And last time Sandy Creek had a big road trip, they had to go all the way down to Wayne County to play in quarterfinal action. So it was a long road trip. So big advantage, Region 5 Team 1 versus 
Region 5, Team 2. We'll have more in a bit. You know, all this bracketology talk. Is, it, it, it's, <laughs> it's never too soon to start because I know folks are sitting there looking with pens and pencils trying to figure out who's going to go where. But, yeah, big difference in Region 5, the way that it's laid out this year. A lot of road trips, especially if you're the two seed coming out. I was just going to say all this bracketology talk's <laughs> making me hungry. I know, that's, that's what all I was I, thinking. I got food on the brain. Bracketology <laughs> make you hungry. Hey, hey, that's see, here's the hungry. thing. I know him. He, I'm looking at his brackets, man. He's probably got these things filled out already. Oh, yeah. absolutely. I, I will John, neither confirm nor deny that remark. You see what I'm saying? There's I know no that. I know you won, John. That's yeah. okay, The John. word for the evening is extrapolation. <laughs> uh, excuse me? Did That's you do okay. that by Playing yourself? everything for No, my wife gave me that I word. I thought so. See, that doesn't sound like you. <laughs> let's, let's see. P is 4. X is 8. So there's a decent amount of Scrabble points in there, Proctor. Ooh, boy. I'll tell you what. We're going to have to have a conversation after this is over with. Don't just sing it. Bring it, partner. Oh, brother. It's about to come on. Whoa, like... whoa, whoa. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> all right. This is my board, pal. All right. I could take all y'all anyway. All right. All right. Okay. Now it's time to move on. <laughs> <laughs> Phil, tell us more about Georgia Traveler. Hey, well, here's the one thing I want you to know, man. There's a popular meal in the state of Georgia, and it happens to be shrimp and grits. Have Love you ever it. had any? Lo what are you talking about? Absolutely. All right. Love well, it. I'm going to tell you what. Christine Van Blocken is going to introduce us to a place that really throws down. All I'm right. talking about real shrimpy. Let's see it. And gritty. <laughs> In the mood for some real Southern cooking? Well, it doesn't get any better than Jonah's Fish and Grits here in downtown Thomasville. Owned by husband and wife team Caleb and Lauren Brown, this family business is a local favorite. We come at least one or two times a week. <laughs> one or two times a week? Yes. Really? Excellent. And it is even becoming a nationwide favorite. And you came all the way from Arizona for the fish and grits here? Yes. I ordered the shrimp, okay. and it's phenomenal. Um, probably order a second one. Favorite dishes are the mahi tasso, the harvest salad, the veggie plate with red cabbage slaw, and of course, those southern favorites, fried green tomatoes and shrimp and grits. I love it, it's excellent. All the dishes here are simply heavenly, which leads us to how Jonah's Fish and Grits got its name. In a church service in Gainesville, Florida, one Sunday, and I heard a, a sermon about Jonah. I definitely can relate to Jonah, you know, and always being obedient. Anyways, he ended up being obedient and did what the Lord wanted him to do. And at that time, I was actually thinking about a, a restaurant and a seafaring theme, and I said, what better to, a way to incorporate my faith and, you know, everybody thinks of the big fish when I think of Jonah. That has given me some divine inspiration to find out how they make those glorious fish and grits. All right, hanging out here in the kitchen with Carl the Cook. How are you, Carl the Cook? All right, it's a little warm. I, I love it, yeah. It's a little warm in here. All right, I am all geared up and ready to go. We are cooking up one of your specialties. What are we cooking? This is the tasso mahi. Okay, how do we grill this up? Carl adds Cajun seasonings and some other secret seasonings we can't tell you about. Then we just put a little butter on the black and then more. Okay. Yeah. And a little more butter on it. We'll keep it juicy. More butter is always a good thing. Then Carl Cover covers it up to steam. Cooks about three and a half minutes on each side. Excellent. And then while that's cooking, we move over here. Good, because I'm doing a really great job of nothing in here, so put me to work. <laughs> what, what can I do to help out? Time for even more butter. I knew it. One, two, three, four, five pots of butter. Then it's time for those secret ingredients. Shh. Then add some fireworks to the aforementioned secret ingredients. Yeah, I can't tell you what's in it. Time to plate it up for all those hungry customers. Pretty good. Nice heaping scoop of collard greens. Nice. Rest on the side just like that. And how do you guys make your collard greens? Anything? Oh, that's a real secret. You see the look on his face? Yeah. <laughs> Mahi Tasso, Donuts Fish and Grits with 17 secret ingredients. <laughs> you won't be able to find out what they are, but they all taste good. And then one last order of the day, a big bowl of grits with a candle on top, of course, to serve up to a very special customer who just happens to be celebrating his 90th birthday today. This is how great this restaurant is. Instead of a birthday cake, we get happy birthday to you. What better way to ring in your 90s than by blowing out your candle, not atop a cake, but in a big bowl of grits and heavenly grits at that. Now, it was Sam Crenshaw's birthday I know, today. I know. We're, we're Seashaw's Grits, man. Yeah. We, oh, we brought some up. nice Where's cupcakes. Where's the fish? We, 
Did yeah. you see the size of that fish, though? <laughs> That's, if I go to eat, I want something looking like that, okay? And That's I'm a little just, too healthy for me, though. What? <laughs> you? What? Butter? Are you kidding me? Okay, Mr. Mountain Dew. <laughs> We're not even going to talk about healthy, okay? This segment brought to you by. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, the, grit, the grits was my favorite part. The grits yes. was always my favorite yes. part. Mm -hmm. Got to do it that's, right. That's the great birthday present right there is the grits. Right. Smoked Gouda. That's a good one. I'm just Smoked saying. Gouda on mm -hmm. uh, Mark, come on. You're being left out. I know. I'm well, he feels left out because he never gets guy, any food. There you go. Okay, so you've never tried shrimp and grits, fish and grits. I never have, but I'm What? Not. Oh my God, were y'all going right, We that? got a family Check problem right out. here, right <laughs> now, okay? We're going to have to make sure Mark Are you gets Southern? Pretty much. No. <laughs> he's Indiana by birth. and Well, he's technically, come on, he's Southernified by now. Yeah, it's been 23 Southernified. years. Yeah. He, he's Southernified Hold up, hold up, homie, did she just say Southernified? Southernified. Southernified, Southernified. Yes. yeah. How many syllables? It's the personification of being Southern, oh. Southernified. Right, thank oh. you, John. <laughs> I'm so educated right now, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just scared. It's all right, Mark. She nounded a verb but for an adjective. We're building our list here of all the things that we owe, Mark. Mm -hmm. A burger, donuts. By the end of the year? Grits. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we'll I'll just have something. to have a feast, maybe by Thanksgiving or something. <laughs> Guacamole. Guacamole. That was yeah. one. Yeah. Dome, Mark Harmon is going to gain 15 pounds from all the food that he's going to Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, you're better off. That's now. a heck that's of really a probably prediction so. there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's going to wrap up week nine of season five of Football Fridays in Georgia here on GPB, where the War Eagles have knocked off their region rival Sandy Creek by a 37-7 score. We certainly hope that you've enjoyed tonight's broadcast. Don't forget that GPB Sports is your home for all things high school football in the state of Georgia. And next week we head to Gwinnett County for a big 6A matchup between Decula and the Archer Tigers. So that tips off at 7 o'clock with the All Access Pass pregame show and game kickoff at 7.30. So for all of us here at GPB Sports, have a great week. We'll see you next week from Decula. And until then, 